final fours I've been to. We're good. All right. The podcast is on. We're live from Avid Caddy. My guy, David Brun, what's happening, Dave? What's up? What's up? What's up? Uh, my guy, Brandon Cristal, what's happening? Nate Jackson in the house. What's up, man? Come on in. You guys know each other, don't you? Yes, sir. Hello, man. <laughs> How you doing, man? Good to see you as well. So, all right. Here's the concept. We're here to watch the game. Yeah. But we're also, we got golf, we got food, we got drinks. You don't have to sit here and babysit me as we watch the game. Sit here, watch the game, do whatever you want, walk around, okay. have some fun. And we'll just watch the game as it goes. For sure. So I want, I want to keep out, it. Man. I want to keep it as loose as humanly possible. Right. I'm glad so I, I didn't want bring a to... tie. I'm glad yeah. I didn't bring a tie. Then. Now, what ring are you sporting there, David? Super Bowl Fifty, the most important Super Bowl of history. That's a good yeah. ring. You want to show That's Nate Jackson? Every... Yeah. That why one? you gotta rub it in, man? That's what everybody has <laughs> said. Come, Come on, the most man. important ring in Super Bowl history is what <laughs> everyone has said. How <laughs> often do you wear the ring? Only for appearances. It's more mostly a paperweight. Yeah. How, how often do you have it with you? Because our pal Ryan Harris will keep it in his pocket with him, like, pretty regularly. If he's out in public, if he knows he's going to be, like, in public doing anything, speaking engagements, I think games, Ryan Harris has it with him all the time. Yeah, he yeah. does. Well, yeah, he's always speaking, though. Like, That's true. Always true. I guess if you're – Me, I, he, he, <laughs> only for certain appearances. It's like a pickup basketball game. It's like if they're a pickup speaking engagement, Ryan Harris will drop in and, and give a keynote. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, I'm sure people love seeing it. It's great to have. Well, he's always like, so when he, when he has it on, he's always like talking like with it close to his yep. face. Oh yeah. He's like, so <laughs> you know, over here you're looking here. And there. You know what's fucked up though? That's the last time the Broncos were in the playoffs. Yeah. That's not a joke. Yeah. Think yeah. about how much has changed in your life. That's and the last. In, in two years, that whole defense was gone. Isn't that crazy? It's nuts. How long before they're back? I've said three years. Three years. Yeah. Three. Ooh. Three years till they're back in the playoffs. Yeah. Oh, I meant winning the Super Bowl. Oh, that's uh, oh, maybe five for a Super Bowl. Super Bowl. We have a ping pong I'm, ball. I mean, I'm looking. Never that again. Game. All right. That game, there's a lot that goes into it, and there's a lot of pieces they let go. A lot of pieces that they need to get get back, and then you know all. You know, the, the draft is a revolving door. You don't know who's going to stay. I love we're here watching a basketball game, but I can just talk about Broncos all night. That's not a problem. Oh, that's easy. That's, that's, e that's, that's easy. easier to do. Because there's um, a lot who you, of shit to talk about. Who are you there. drafting? Huh? Who are you drafting? I'm drafting an old lineman. And then maybe we find, <laughs> finding a gym in the – Did you say an offensive lineman? It is not like that. Oh well, it's and, a, and drafting it, a, this is a really good O-line draft at the top. Yeah. Like four or five tackles. Yeah. Four or we five got, or six, yeah, two what, tackles. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I'm mean? not saying that. I'm just, you just said it. No, I'm yeah. saying it's a good draft. Yeah, I didn't yeah. say do that. And then get a quarterback. You're not drafting a quarterback. No, because last time – what we do in the first round last time we had a quarterback draft. That was Paxton Lynch in the late 20s. When was the last time they took a quarterback high? Jay, Jay Cutler. Cutler. Yeah. That didn't work out. Well, I no, mean, it was, did not work out. It could have. It could have. It could have if they didn't fire Shady. Yeah, the yeah, McDaniels well. deal, right? McDaniels came However, in. However, guys, guys, he we missed the playoffs three straight years with Jay at the helm. We were eight and five, had to win one of the last three games, and we lost all three and lost that. Right, hold now, on. Mike Shanahan there, got but... fired. No, not in his third year. Oh, oh yeah, right, right. You're if right. You, think, do you think if Shanny doesn't get five, you don't make the playoffs with Cutler the next year? Oh, no, I do. I do. I yeah. do, too. Yeah. But I'm the, not here. What about the trajectory? <laughs> <laughs> you think about that? I'm what, not here. <laughs> what about the trajectory of Cutler's career? I was here. I, I, you know, when McDaniels came, I got cut. Yeah. Jay like went to Chicago. Month, yeah. Like 20 it, of us got cut. Oh, yeah, he got he, – when Jay house. went to Chicago, it wasn't like he lit the world on fire and became a Hall of Famer. He was a solid player. I don't know if he made it. I don't think he made another Pro Bowl, though. So Maybe he was. The, the point being, Coaching there's matters. no guarantee. I guess he might, might have gotten the best out of him. Kyle would have come along probably at some point to help his dad. And who knows what that staff would have looked like. Yeah. But it's hard to hit on first-round quarterbacks, period, ever, period. No. Yeah. And why is that, DMAC? Give us the reason why it's hard to hit on first round. Because it's the the success rate even of highly drafted quarterbacks is thirty six percent at though? best. But why? It's an inexact science. It's but, a hard job. That's why they make forty million a year. But why? All right, you're I'd not say, answering it. I'd say it's because the coaches and organizations don't totally commit about everything that it takes to draft a quarterback, and because it's been a disproportionate position. The value of the quarterback has become so ridiculous that a lot of guys are overdrafted. 
They're yeah. just drafted when they shouldn't be drafted. Yeah. They're they're really not deserving it. They're not good enough. But teams get desperate. Teams get desperate because you depend so much on that one position. Yeah. It's it's and the rules of football have made it more valuable for that quarterback because it makes it frankly easier to play the position yeah. because the defense it's harder and harder to play defense. Every, but that's go ahead. Every every year it gets harder. But every the defense year they is, find something to change. But the defense is playing better and better. The offense had a couple shitty years back to back. Like their points per game are down, yards are down. The defense is actually playing a lot better than the offense right now. My argument is that COVID year fucked it up because um, there's no fans in the stands and uh the points were most ever, most touchdown thrown ever, fewest interceptions ever. And then the NFLPA said, okay, this is great football. You guys don't have to come to OTAs anymore. You don't have to practice anymore. Your practice time gets reduced, and that affects offenses more than defenses because offenses, guys, are on timing. They need to fucking rep after rep after rep in the passing game. But they can the defensive do- guys are just like, rawr, 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 rawr. But they can, But they can do that at any time. Hell, Russell was flying them to California no. or whatever. Doing, doing. They could do it at any time. They can, but we they don't. don't. Get, as, as a de- as a defense, we don't get that luxury. Like, yeah, we could talk checks and stuff like that, but we don't get timing. Like, we don't. And you never, you never work on timing. tackling the second you get to the pros, and yeah. more and more or less and less do you have any contact beyond yeah. a quarter of a preseason game for your starters and guys that are going to play a lot. Well, I, think it's, I think it's a small thing. I think it's the fact that back to the easiest, I guess, assessment. It's hard to play. That's why. We can name all the good quarterbacks in the league right now, the great quarterbacks, even less, and all time we can name the great quarterbacks in about 90 seconds. Yeah. You can the, what? They're all in the AFC, too. Ever. <laughs> oh, to name, right now. Name, and about. the AFC has the most first-round yeah. quarterbacks yeah. If compared to but, the but, NFC. Here, I'll, th- I'll throw a stat at you that isn't going to change until Eli, Phillip Rivers, Aaron Rodgers end up in the Hall of Fame. With Peyton in the Hall of Fame right now, since the modern era of football, the merger, 1970, there are currently seven – quarterbacks with gold jackets that were first round picks in 50 years of drafts yeah so you're gonna have about six or seven more Mahomes is one of them but those guys all bunch together yeah. and I'm gonna even give you Matt Ryan and Matt Stafford to get there with Rivers Big Ben Eli yeah. Rogers I think I'm done there yeah and and then those three more Tell us about your charity, what you got going on. with uh, Dang, that's a big shift right there. Yeah. About I know. So we'll get back to we'll football. Football. the football. Well, I, I, just, I just didn't want to forget about it. No, no, I no, no, I didn't, no, I didn't no. You're good. You're good. No, I, I mean, honestly, if I didn't play football, I wouldn't have the foundation. So it kind of it works hand in hand. Um, you know, Bruton's Books, we're geared towards childhood literacy here at K through third grade in Denver Public, Denver Public Schools. Um, we're trying to tackle tackle the reading issue, especially it's been highlighted after COVID. And now you see it in the CMAS testing where – Denver last year they scored at forty percent. Third graders read at proficient level. Yeah. So to, to learn to read to read to learn at third grade, like if you're not reading efficiently at that age, then what's your chance of success later on? You see kids acting out. You see them bullying. You see yeah. like there's a lot of things that come come with that. Um. So we've been since 2015 been tackling that. Been adopting the school. Uh, we've adopted Center for Talent Development since post COVID. Um, donated twenty eight thousand dollars to that school, iPads, supplemental reading programs, things of that nature. Because there's also the shift to digital learning. I love a book in my hand, yeah. But I understand the way of the world. Yeah. Like you have to be able to operate an iPad, a computer, or something right. like that. So we try to digitize the space a little bit. Um, so this year we have our third annual golf outing at the club at Ravenna um, in Littleton on July first. So it's a little, little sooner than what we normally do in September, okay. but. Um, Great cause. We're looking to adopt another school this year, make the iPads one-to-one at both schools, as well as uh, bring in some diversely and culturally enriched books. Are you doing a cycle, a, a, a ride, or? Man, I'm always on always on the bike. Even no, in but the wind as part of your charity yeah. thing, are you doing? No, nothing. That's nothing like golf. Really, that's golf. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The charity fundraisers. For I'm golf trying golfing. to. I'm trying to uh, get Nate into cycling somehow. Come on, man. Just get on the bike and. Don't you think he'd be you know, great at it? Yeah. I mean, okay. what does it take? What does it take to be great uh, at a, a taint that's <laughs> yeah, a very a very raw hide taint. <laughs> yeah, raw hide taint. Well, didn't didn't well, how's uh, your taint right now, D Mac? Is it taint? Per- yes, your taint. Is it just completely it's destroyed? Superior. It's a, it's a perm. No, you wear you wear the you know you wear the Bad. biker shorts. Yeah, yeah. You know, I used to make fun of all the biker stuff, and then I'm. Like, ah, this would be comfortable with the shorts. Yeah. They said, ah, I don't like the drag of the t-shirt. Let me put one yeah. of this. It tastes like that. Yeah. You look like you're yeah, going to you look like you're official. Yeah, yeah but, but it's fun. like, it's just, 
I love the freedom of just going distances, runnings, yeah. whatever. Yeah. But I mean, the fact that you can go 30, 40, 50 miles in a day yeah. or just be out all day. I try to ride my bike, you know, as, as much. And I've fallen and. Have you had, have you taken a spill or two? Oh, I take a spill every year. Well, oh, you really? you do mountain biking. The mountain well, bike. I don't. I haven't been on the. I'm talking about on my road bike. Like okay. I push. I push my turns so hard. Like I, I remember, Bruce. This was a long time ago in the locker room. I forget. You probably won't remember the story, but we're talking about something, and Dave likes to go fast. He goes, "Yeah, I rented this Ferrari. I was going 160 miles an no, hour. Well, he no. was on the radio with you and." Albert one time. Was that what it was? Yeah, he's on the and he's like, hey, I'm, I'm test driving this Porsche or Ferrari or something. And and he's on he's on you know Bluetooth I or whatever. It was a Porsche. Yeah, I it was a but Porsche. he was he had it up to a lot higher than you're allowed to legally drive. He's like, Can you hear it? I'm like, I could hear it, but I don't know if it came through. And then I told D Mac after I'm like, could you hear what he's doing? Like, no, I'm like he's driving 160 miles. He's like, well, that seems kind of dumb to be doing <laughs> during an interview or in general. I was like, Bluetooth, like, baby. I was like, David, like I, just, I was just trying to figure out like where in Colorado you would do that. Like, 470. Just pay those tolls. <laughs> Hopefully they don't see the license plate. <laughs> yeah. When, and when you're in a test drive, who cares? So what's the fastest you've ever gone on 470? One, and I'm sure this is all in the past. One, one, yeah, I don't drive like that anymore. Um, 187. Oh wow. my god, dude! I've, I've been I've been 190 on a motorcycle in Ohio. Get out of here! Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you see the I've video? skydive. I've jumped out of a helicopter on a snowboard. What is it? Huh? <laughs> you jumped out of a helicopter on a snowboard? Yeah, Mission Impossible or what, dude? Yeah. Right? right. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> how music. high of a jump was it? About 25, 30 feet. I did it in Whistler Blackcomb. This is also while I played. Every day was while I played. While you played? Every day was while uh, I played. He did this all while he played. Yeah. I had freedom. I, sky, I, I did skydiving right over here, indoor skydiving. You weren't a professional athlete. Indoor, indoor skydiving. Yeah. skydiving is, it's, it's, it's harrowing. Skydiving. You sometimes so, like four uh, or five feet off the ground, and you're six feet, and you're wow. three feet. Wow. So since you stopped playing, you don't do those kind of extreme things anymore. No, I got rid of the motorcycle because the kids, you yeah. have the young kids, and then, um, but and then the Jeep was always a money pit because it was always breaking down because I put so much into it, and then I would crash it, I jump it, fix it, and all this. So I kind of I slowed down. So I I look forward in the downhill mountain biking if I get to it, or the road biking like on the descent. Like I barely touch my brake. How many Dude, more? Buddy, like, how many more vehicles could you have owned had you not put all the add-ons to your Jeep and your other cars and your bikes? Like I've been four or five other whole maybe vehicles. maybe maybe three three at least. You had a three Jeep, at least. your Bruticon that was. I put like Wait, 200, like, time out, time 200 out. grand into a Jeep <laughs> Wrangler. Did you not have things in your contracts about? Oh, yeah. Nah, I mean, yeah, yeah but like, did you know? I, I even rode a motorcycle to the facility. Like I did it one time to the facility. They just said, "Don't do that again." Yeah, like, they all knew it. Like Coach Fox knew that I rode. Coach Fox knew that I snowboarded. Like the, the amount of players that I've come across that skied or snowboarded a lot more snowboarded during their playing career. When you know it's, I guess it's anything that can injure you. There's that clause in there. Yeah. I remember like Brian Urlacher and Devin Hester in the middle of their, you know, really good run with the Bears were like spotted in Keystone or Breck yeah. or something. It kind of depends on how much they like you as to whether or not they would actually uh, exercise that clause if right. you got hurt. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? If they like you, that you're in the middle of a contract, they know you're a hard worker, shit happens, they're not going to fuck you over. But I remember Lance Ball loved to um, snowboard. snowboard. Yeah. He was up there in all, the all the time. All the time. Uh, but one of my favorite memories. So we used to get to the opposing quarterback like on a phone call covering the Broncos. And this is when Orton went to uh the Chiefs. I go, what's your favorite memory of Colorado? And I'm thinking like his team or the Broncos or a game. He goes, the mountains. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Kyle. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. See ya. Yeah. Well, why do you what you have a problem with him saying that? I've no, seen... no, 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 no. I don't no, you have you've you've relayed that anecdote like dozens of times. Well it just shows me like how it, it, what his are beautiful, man. I got it. But you spend your career with a group of guys, you know, working hard to accomplish a goal. You would think one of your best memories is somehow playing with the Denver Broncos or, or a game. It, but, or he met, but his was you met off yeah. the field. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no, no, I get it. And he had to be a victim of Tebow. He was he 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 got the Tebow stuff worse than anybody. He was the first player I remember ever saying. I'm not worried about what the fans say or do. I care about my teammates because fans just didn't like him, even though he was clearly the better option. Yeah.
Did you guys? Where did you guys? Did you guys cross? I you guys, not. you guys were not no, teammates. No, no. You must have just missed your each what, other. What was your first year? Oh nine. Oh nine. Oh yeah. yeah. Were you? I was at. I was. Oh eight was my last year. So you guys just missed each other. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you didn't. You didn't get Tebow then. You didn't. No, you got Tebow. I got Tebow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what was that like between Tebow and Orton? I don't know what it's like quarterback walk in the quarterback room. I just know that Tebow got all the praise, you know, for Miami and Bra game, and Brady Quinn was there too, right? Right, huh? Brady Quinn, your Notre Dame. Oh, Brady yeah. was a uh, fellow Irishman. Well, you're bringing up the most famous story of all time, which I, I still don't even believe this story to this day. It's the craziest fucked up shit. It's before the Steelers playoff game that Brady. The plan was Brady, Brady was going to go in on third, third down. down. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Right. Yeah. Is that the yeah. most messed up? I mean, yeah, you don't trust. I mean, you don't trust your the quarterback at the helm. You never see it. Yeah, you that to, shit don't work. You throw That's it on two third quarterback and seven. Don't work. Right. That was the most fucked up plan of all time. That this was actually gonna maybe happen, and then the game was just going well. Yeah. And Tebow was doing fine. And but defense you know what's funny about doing the, great. What, the defense was fucking fantastic. Yeah, here's what the thing about Dmac though. When he when he when he thinks about a, the success or failure of a team, he thinks it's all about the quarterback. If the quarterback played good, they're gonna win. If he doesn't, they're gonna lose. So what about Super Bowl Fifty? Super Bowl what, about, 50, what about that whole season? The you can win a Super Bowl with the defense. You can, but you can't. But that's not the goal. Well, well the no, goal is it's not it's sustainable. Draft the quarterback it's, 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 the first round. It's happened like five times right. in NFL history. You guys are one of them. Yep. The Ravens are another one. The '86 it's Bears are another. Bears. I mean, you can you can remember the Legion times of that Boom. happened. Yep, uh, the Ravens Seattle. in 2000. And everybody Ravens forgets about that when talk about Russell's contract. But we go no story about it. The Legion of Boom, but the Legion of Boom. Russ didn't have to light the world up from the jump. It was that defense set a tone. Percy Harvin was yeah. lights out. You're it, saying you can't repeat after that. It's very nobody's it's done it. it. Literally nobody has ever done it on defense alone. Okay. So like, I'll tell you the team that was gonna do it. If anybody was going to do it, would have been like the '86 Bears, like that was, or the 2000 Ravens. Well, but the they, well, they couldn't. But, and the Seahawks team that had the Patriots essentially almost beaten. Yeah, right? they had, they had them later. Their offense was significantly better. Still, Legion of Boom, but Russ had figured it out in year three, and all those passes to those no-name receivers, Russ is putting it on the well, money. Well, I'll, I'll tell you I'm why I don't offense. think the Broncos could do it because you lost Malik and Danny Trevathan. You right, lost right two. Out the gate. Right out the gate, everybody was gone. Well, and Peyton Manning, who's maybe the best game manager yeah, I get of all it, time. But the defense just listen. Yeah, but you could have. But could you have done something? Like, how would you have kept Brock? Because Brock, it, yeah, well, yes, yes. Right? I think yes. that's where. But they also didn't keep Brock, so there's yeah. that. Well, no, but they. Well, but they, Brock was Brock was pissed. Yeah. Brock was pissed. Come on now. Like, well, who is he pissed at? The team and Coops so, and yeah, Elway. Yeah, I don't think he cared about Peyton. Anybody, anybody who made that damn decision that he shouldn't play at all in the playoff. Yeah. Or yeah. Like listen. after essentially. He, he takes he it a five and one. the game or just as well two. to get us there. Right. And guess what they did? They fucked up and they drafted Paxton Lynch. They panicked. They, they panicked. Yeah. But this isn't panic this year. This is just doing something smart. And drafting no, an offensive lineman would not be smart. All right. What's the move then, D-Mac? Bo Nix. Bo Nix. Bo Nix. Fine. Stay at 12. What, what about when you draft Bo Nix? I've talked to scouts that told me they like Bo Nix until things break down. Well, whatever, man. What are you going to do? Well, right, but Derek Carr is great until things break down. How many Super Bowls has Derek Carr been in? My point being, just being a little bit better than average is not worth taking that risk if you don't think he can get you there. I got one for you. I got one for you. Why doesn't Justin Simmons have a job right now? That is well, I know a fucking that hot too, topic but... right there, man. I have no idea. I, I do. I mean, I was at the combine. I talked to people and at the owners' meetings where he still didn't have a job. He is pricing himself out of a job today. Just today. He still wants top of the market money. I, I'm not saying he's not worth it, but, but that's should. the answer. But, so he, what, but he should. I, I sure. Think, I think he's been blackballed as far as like a Pro Bowl, like multiple years, all pro. Like, you mean right. to tell me last year he, he wasn't a Pro Bowler after missing six right. games? He's been all pro. And still at the league in picks? Like, you mean to tell me he's not worth it? You're going to put Derwin James, who, who can tackle but can't yeah. cover? Right? Yeah. <laughs> You think that's true? He's just I think he's too well rounded as a person. They don't want this guy who's like super smart, has all this other shit going on. Yeah. Why why would you want somebody who's excellent at his job, 
incredible in the community. Yeah, they don't. But like a dad. They don't. Like, if I'm just what right now, they this want is, football soldiers, man. <laughs> this is the sense I get after being at the owners' meetings is because he's not getting top dollar, which really nobody on a new contract got that. A lot of the safeties got cut. Yeah, nobody got top. Is he's just going to now bide his time and wait for someone to get hurt and or just say, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to go to the Chiefs or the Ravens or a team with a chance to win a Super Bowl, compete for a Super Bowl on a one-year deal. That's still going to be better than minimum, Yeah, but it's going to be six, seven, whatever. Basically, who is it that went to Chicago? Did Bayard go to Chicago to replace Jackson? Yeah. Somebody went and got $15 million over two years uh, instead of we are, over one. We are at Avid Caddy Golf Lounge, and this is crazy. What's up, brother? Good to see you. My man. My man. That's a pirate. Anyways, a real we, life fight. <laughs> this dodgeball is this the movie dodgeball? You got to try some of this vodka. vodka Dave the pirate. Vodka? Where's, where's vodka? The, oh, it's vodka based seltzer. I had one. Oh. Yeah, there, yeah. They're here. Can I grab one? Uh, grab one. Oh, take go grab go grab one. Vodka. Go grab Dave, one. Vodka. 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 Just vodka. What's great? Vodka. And I was talking to the young ladies that are doing the marketing on this. Is the space with the seltzer and vodka based drinks is pretty minimal right now, so they should be able to. Cutting yeah, the market. nobody's thought of that yet. <laughs> what? What? Vodka and seltzer? The, the, the wait, se- wait, wait. What? The second every beer company is like, you know what? White Claw truly are doing great, but we're also going to make Bud Light sell. It's a crowded market. Did you get your lobster yet? No. Yeah. So we got the Loco Lobster Truck outside. Uh, we got my guy from J- Andon from Journey Spice Companies walking around with little tasty treats. The game started. Here we go. There's yeah. an actual basketball actual game. Actual basketball on. game going on, man. We may watch it. We may not. Yeah. I'll keep an eye on it. You get two yeah. number ones. You don't get two number ones you know, as often as you think. Um, what Avid Caddy is, is they've got two golf based simulators. 200 golf courses are loaded in there. And then they have a driving range. They want, you can see this space. You can see they want to expand. They've got the room to do it. And this is actually a private club. You have to be a member to be part of the club, and they're giving away memberships with the long dr- drive competition. I got that. And the closest to you got that? I got and, that. And closest to the pin. And this all was started um, when we started doing our podcast. Wow. So this this event, right, the roots of this are me getting fired from, you know, that place. Yeah, that place. I've been cut. You guys been cut? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. Brandon, you got – Brandon been used, fired a couple times. Yeah, a couple times. You didn't and get a face to face, did you? I chose not to do the face. Oh, you did. Oh, I, okay. I was asked to come in. I knew what was coming. I said no. I'll just do it on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't there that day either. You. I know you. You missed that. I day got it well. over the phone too. Yeah, Dave. Me, Chad, Nate, and Orlando all got fired on the same day. Yeah, I do remember that. It was a mass exodus. It was a massacre. We yeah. uh, <laughs> just got rid of. Think about this and, for a and second. Their head of sales. They got, yeah, Sean, Sean, who produced all of this, um, as well as Jeff Owen, who also used to work there. It's just stunning what they got rid of. And and tonight, um, because we started a podcast and because I work for, you know, frankly, Altitude 92.5, Altitude Sports Radio, it all came together. My guy has been an incredible partner um, top to bottom, and I'm hoping that we just get going. Are you... Thinking about the podcast realm at all, Dave? We've done a couple little things. Sort of like seltzers. There aren't that many podcasts out there, so I'd be interested in what you had to say. I do so dang much. I have no time to even take a shit. Like, come on now. <laughs> like, you know what I'm like, I'm like, oh, shit. I got to go to the bathroom. How much time I got? All right, I got five minutes. <laughs> like, all right, so this isn't on your radio. Yeah, How many yeah. kids you got? Four. Four. Yeah. Four. Yeah. <laughs> How old are they? Uh, 18, 8, 6, and 2. Oh, wow. Yeah. Quite, quite 18, a range. 18... Eight, six, and two, yep. four. Yeah. And I feel like you told wow. me last time I saw you, but where's your 18-year-old going to school? Not Notre Dame, right? No, Jason's not doing Notre Dame. He's uh going to Miami of Ohio. He's going to play baseball there. No, no he's is done he? with baseball. He's, no, don't miss Yeah, he's just going to focus on school, exercise, science, kinesiology. He cool. wants to be a wow. PT okay. or Cairo. So right. sweet. And then maybe you can help him get a job. And that's yep. what you're doing, right? Yep. yep. Yeah. So how did you get into it? How long did you know you wanted to do that? Man, I, no, I wanted to be a PT since I was in seventh grade. Oh, for wow. real? Yeah, for a that's long crazy. time. So do you treat yourself? Do you like, you know? Every now and then I'll put a needle in there. Really? Yeah, I'll, I'll dry needle myself. But, wow. You know, I still have that old school mindset. It's like, I'm not injured. I'm just hurt. I can work through it. Yeah. Right. Um, 
But every now and then I have my PTs work on me here and there. What's hurting on you the most these days, Nate? Um, I'm actually feeling pretty good, man. Are you? Yeah. Um, let's see. I've been jogging the last couple of weeks, which it took me a long time to even like jog a mile. Yeah. Like, my ankles were so messed up and my hip and it was, yeah. everything was rotated in and my back. Was, it was just the alignment. Yeah. It was so screwed up. And the range of motion was so bad in my right ankle that if I tried to jog, everything got thrown off. Right. Yeah. And uh, I've been working on that for a long time. And I'm finally feeling pretty good, man. I can't really complain about anything right now. That's good. How the jo- how good. how's the jogging felt? Have you had it to go felt see good, David? Dude. It felt good. Yeah, that's awesome. I can't go really fast yet, you know, but I'm just nice and easy. But I'm my chest is even. I'm getting a nice sweat. Knees knees aren't bothering knees are all right. Yeah, that's, that's my reluctance to, to run. I'm a little older than than you and a little younger than you, but at 46, like I can play a little bit of softball. But even when I do that, I like I need to pitch or catch. I can't play well, anything in the outfield. I've I've run 10 marathons. Yeah. so I've done a lot of running. Yeah. yeah. You can do it. It's not that hard. It's 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 just you just gotta embrace the suck. Get through it, right? Yeah. But running, running sucks. sucks. Running, running <laughs> just beats you up. That's why I love cycling. Yeah, I hate running. Is it true that the super long distance stuff shrinks your gonads, drops your testosterone? That's I'm not. Enti- I'm not entirely sure about that. I'm gonna say no for me personally. Um, <laughs> I've got but everything's I, fine with me, I, I, but I still, but I still lift and everything. Yeah, like yeah. I still do the other things. That right. are yeah, yeah. My balls booster. are the size of peas. I mean, they are <laughs> tiny. <laughs> well, I, I'm gonna. There was a, there was a, there was one of these um, boner clinics. We'll call them. I won't <laughs> mention Jesus which Christ. one, but we we worked with them at the old radio. Station. I love that one, and I still work with them. And so anyway, I still work with them. I went in there <laughs> so because they wanted us to get familiar with it. And stuff. Yes, and I'm not gonna tell the whole story there. Yeah, just just very then, very good things. It was just a funny thing that a gentleman told me there who was working there. Oh, oh they told you that. Yeah, they told me. Oh, okay, okay. He, he's basically like, you know, this one thing you might do, it might you might shrink your nuts. Probably will, but who wants <laughs> big balls anyway? I mean. <laughs> I mean, I, I do I do long distance cycling. So who wants big balls sitting on the seat? I, I actually enjoy my tiny nuts. I love my tiny nuts. They work. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. <laughs> hey, <coughs> I had two boys. I'm done. It's a wrap. Did you get snipped? Yes. It was the best thing I ever did. How, kind of how was it? The Easy, be- easiest thing to do too. You did it too? Yeah. Easy. Oh, it's easy. because who wants to deal with all that stuff? What pulling out? Well, yeah, I mean, not <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. So a buddy of mine had it recently, and he went into like a dark depression afterwards. Is, did Why? you guys have any of that sort no. of? No, no. Psychological depression. stuff. I, I, I contemplated no. it. I bought, because... I bought a jock strap and I was ready to go. I was back in <laughs> clinical rotation. Dude, like two days I was later. even. I was one of the few people that got infected. I had to take the horse pills oh, for like shit. nine days. That happens every now and then. I, no, I've contemplated, it and there's so many people. You know, with, look, Final Four, March Madness. So many people that have done it around that, right, to get those first two days off. But when you do what we do, it's never been an issue for me to be able to watch the first two days of, yeah. of the tournament because it's just work. I'm so like, I've been strategically thinking, what's a couple days that I could use dude, a break? Dude, do you want right. more kids or not? No. Then be done with it. Yeah, I'm not putting it off for any real reason. Uh, I'm trying to find a calendar a date. Like, what the hell just happened right there? I, I'm curious why your buddy got depressed. Well, it's it's more complex with him because he's never had kids. Oh. He married it. He married into a family. She had two kids from a previous oh, marriage. So he never got a chance. To and he's like, him. I don't want kids. And she's like, Well, then, oh. if you don't want them, then let's just do this. And then after the fact, I think he was like, Wait a second, like I've never oh, had I kids. Had my own, yeah. And now, like I can't even if I change my mind. You know what I mean? Gotcha. You can't change your mind. You can get a reverse. Yeah, you can get a reverse. You can get right? a reverse. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, we're here for the watch party. All right, here. so we're, no, we're here for nuts. We're, we're back. Here for nuts. <laughs> and we're back. Um, but but thanks to uh, Ed Prather at Ed Prather Real Estate, the number one trusted team in real estate. I um, just sold my house for 20 years and bought a new one up the road a little bit. So nice. townhome, smaller size, downsizing that whole thing. Congrats. And uh, Ed did the deal. And um, I didn't think I was going to live in Lone Tree, um, but... Here you are. Here I are. am. And, uh, How far away are you? From here, about two miles. Wow. I am literally just down right. the road. Do you have so. a membership here yet? Are you going to come work on your game? Because you used to play more golf than you do these days. Well, this would be great because, listen, man, it's it's inside, so you can use it, you know, 12 months a year. Here, it is a private club, even though we're just in a medical center, strip mall sort of area. But you can use a code, and you just come in here whenever you want. Oh. It's like your own private really? place. Oh, okay. So you can make tea times with your group 
And usually when we come here, it's relatively quiet. This is this is insane. Yeah. This is the most people in here by, I mean, this is ridiculous. And this is kind of a grand opening party that they're having. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, it's not my place. I'm partnering with them to help promote this so people come in and check it out. But, you know, just the ability to come and smash some golf balls around and play in one. These simulators are $70,000 each. So they want to put a couple more in, and they've got the space to do it. So and, and, I, I would love to come here and play. And for people that want to put them in their house, you really have to have 12-foot clearance to have yeah, it yeah, yeah. correct. Because even 10-foot ceilings in a basement is not ideal. I have a buddy who's a long-drive golf guy, and he had one, but he had to have, have – Yeah, so I don't want to force you guys to be here the whole time if you don't want to be here, man. Like, I'm, All right, see you later, man. I, <laughs> deuces. Bye. Get real. Go Purdue. Well, so there, whatever, going on. whenever you want to get something to eat or something to drink, yeah, no, that's cool. or whatever, God, you feel free. All right, feel feel abs. Don't feel bad about it at all. I'm thrilled that you guys got here. Yes, Jeff, you should take a picture or two. Does Jeff have that's more smart. of those uh, lobster roll gift cards? Hey, that yeah. lobster roll was delicious. Do you, oh, you want it? Had it? Oh, I had it. Well, yeah, that's so lobster roll. Lobster roll. Did you? I don't think you did. Lobster roll is like a. You said I could have one, but you never gave me one. There was one on that table there that I think you left. I think, you, I, I, I think you pulled it up. No, no, no. Here's what happened. Somebody got I saw it. it. You pulled it out, put it on the table, and I think it's either on there or someone has gotten a free lobster roll. No, keep that. Somebody probably grabbed it at this point. If, hey, I'll Somebody tell you this. Got if you can find it. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. If Brady can find it, he can have it. Okay. Wait, okay. did you get one? I got one. You got one. Lobster roll is like one of my top Dude, go see if it's there. Ears. Well, no. Big Zach Eaton Dunk. Tiger. Go, go see if it's there. If it's there, it's yours. There's a little motivation. If it's not, it's 20 bucks of lobster rolls. It's yeah, it's, yeah, 23 bucks. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> so enjoy it. Yeah, Loco Lobster. Yeah. So they wanted to come sponsor. Is it there? <laughs> oh. Sorry, I'll man. go talk to him. When, when it's time for a lobster roll, I'll, I'll, I'll walk over with you. Oh, that's. Oh, oh there you go. Well, no, I'm giving Brandon. Hey. All right, there you hey, go. He got it. He knows from lobster rolls. Are you sure? J.O. knows from you guys being hey. from, from the hey, greater hey, Boston area. Hey, you know you know what my coupon is? What? Yeah. The space there. right here. Well, you face. definitely cleaned up a little bit. Do you like it? Oh, you look great. You got a nice little haircut going on. Rude, I lost 40 pounds over the past four months. That's what I heard. I heard you mention that. I know. I was a listen, big fat ass. Listen, listen. Yeah. Enough no. of this, though, man. I know. Enough. I know, I'm fucking ridiculous. I mean, he's just going You're up, up and down, down like Oprah? Yes, he does. Well, especially because... He's on Ozempic now, and that's no, why it's going on. And, uh, especially because you're in a new neighborhood, so you're uh, impressing yeah, new neighbors. Yeah. It's not the same people you've Honey, been around for 20 years. You're going to out there in the neighborhood? Oh, no, he's, he's doing, he's doing, doing that. He's in the street. Yard work with his shirt off a lot yeah, lately. I'm going to walk to the deli, walk yeah. to the... It ain't cold out here. I can shovel this snow. Dude, I don't know what scenario it would take for me to walk around with my shirt off. Maybe it's hot and you will go for a run. Be near no, a pool. I would hope you'd be near. You're trying to set a precedent. You're trying do to you set wear, a standard. Do you wear a shirt in the pool? I I, I wear it sitting next to the pool. Okay. And right. like as you're sliding in, you're taking it off. Is that it? Ooh. Dave, staff it out. All right. All right. Jeff, come on in here for a second. Jeff, come on in. Come on in. I want to. I want to make sure we get uh, a good mention of all of our sponsors here. We're talking lobster rolls. Lobster rolls, huh? Jeff is our. Well, what exactly? Yeah, lower it a little bit. What exactly uh, do you do here? There you go. What exactly would you call yourself? Promoter. Promoter. All sales right. Guy, sales guy, marketing guy. There we go. All the above? here. Talk into the microphone. The if you got. If you got lowered a little bit. Definitely not a radio to. professional. Yeah, there you go. I'm a, there there you go. go. There I'm you go. Yeah, I don't usually do the microphone. All right. I'm all usually right. behind the scenes. Yeah. So. Promote here. Everybody that's who do we got here? Okay, we got Avid Caddy. You're gonna get a Avid Caddy Golf Lounge here has been amazing hosting yeah. us, hosting you over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, just open, come check them out. Uh, we've got uh, vodka, vodka soda. We have Journey Spice Company here. Ed Prey, the real. Where we get the beer from? We got the beer from Red Rocks Beer Garden in Morrison. It is an awesome little place. Yeah. If you're ever going to a show at Red Rocks, it's right at the bait, right in downtown Morris. Awesome place. My buddy Paul. I, you know what? And, and, and Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, Keep my going. buddy Paul owns it. And, uh, okay. It's an Thank awesome, you, awesome place. Cool place if you're ever going to a show. I don't want to sell our guy in and from Journey Spice Company short either. Yeah. Who's, he, is one of the, he is one of our guys on the podcast. 
Like he is. Oh, really? Oh, oh my God. Andon yeah. is like, Sweet. dude, he's con- every single one of our podcasts. That's awesome. Every he, single one. He told me he has not missed one. Really? I know. I oh, wow. watch them every day. No, yeah, it's bananas. Man. Every episode, every day. You know, wow. on our podcast with me, um, Nate and Chad, we don't get to a lot of the comments. They're there. Yeah. Every day they're yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. But we're based more just the three of us talking. Um, but in Hangout Live, which I've done here, which is just me, um, it's nothing but comments. So it's developed its own kind of community. And when I do, um, you know, I, the stuff I do before our show is more based on Nuggets and yeah. Avalanche yeah. and like other Denver yeah. sports. And we just focus on uh, NFL Broncos, college football. Yeah. You know, that's what we say in the football Rockies. realm. I went to the Rockies yesterday. <laughs> Me too. I was, I covered the game. Oh. I wasn't I, just fucking around I drinking had, beers. Well, I brought my kids and had really okay seats. And yeah. Yeah. Watch Chris Bryant from a very good. Yeah, uh, ground into two. Ground into yeah, double it play. Was, it was rough. Who other, uh, what other sponsors we got here, Jeff? Oh, let's see. We've got a uh, local lobster food truck is here. Um, I haven't had my lobster roll yet. You had one, right? Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah I've been here. So they were one. they were here before I got here. They at were here at four o'clock. They yeah, said it was going to take uh, a little while to get things warmed up. Okay. I, so, am I in danger of missing out on them if I no, wait? I um, I would go pretty soon. I would go pretty soon. I, I just right. ordered mine. They're bringing it to me. Oh. oh. I think our friends here at Gorilla Sports are going to throw their logo up a little too to give them a little extra love. That's, That's coming great. your way. Shortly. Yeah. Why don't you go? Yeah, I'm going to go throw my ticket in. Yeah. Go throw your yeah. ticket. Go throw your ticket in. Come back. But Local Lobster was great because they wanted to come on board in the fall when we were doing football watch parties. And and now, I mean, we're seeing the success of this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's well, but making you, a little you, sense you, to keep this going for football. Your standard for <laughs> lobster rolls should be higher than most yes. growing up where you grew up. I grew up in, in Dallas, went to college at the University of Kansas and lived in Kansas City, so my barbecue standards through the roof, but lobster rolls are high on my list of favorite things. Like if it's on well, a menu somewhere and I trust it, I'll get it almost every time. I asked him when he got the lobster, he got it today oh, yeah. Yeah. and ordered it yesterday from me. Come straight so from me. The, 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 we've got really good seafood distribution here because of all the high end sushi places and the handful of high end seafood places. We're getting it the same day that they get it in LA, yeah. Chicago, pick, pick a, a huge city. I mean, it's coming from Maine, but it's going to Denver and Miami yep. at the exact same time. The cool thing I know is so I grew up in New England and went to college in Maine, so lobster is a big part of my life. But I noticed out there on the board they have whoopie pies. Oh, whoopie pies are I, classic. You know what a whoopie pie I, is? I, I, I oh, don't know my God. I've never heard of a whoopie pie. So, oh, it's, 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 um, it's like a devil dog. You know, it's like a round it's like a yeah. cake. Okay. Yeah, it's like a cake cookie, I guess. Do you not know what a devil dog is? I know what a devil dog okay. is. Okay, yeah. well, it all right. is. it's a, it is. It's it's like a cake a, cookie. Yeah, it's yeah, the same thing as a devil dog. Yeah. But whoopie pies, a yeah. whoopie pie. Now, I think the cool thing with whoopie pies, it's a big thing in Maine. Yes. And the minor league baseball teams, when they do all the alternative, like, city connect type. Yeah. The main, uh, the Portland Sea Dogs. Portland Sea Dogs. Is, a, is a, I think, double A of the Red Sox. They changed their name to the main Whoopie Pies. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Full time? Is that their name? No, just during oh. promotional oh. games and things. But yeah. All right. So we, we want to thank everybody we're participating with. We're just getting this channel yep. going. Um, so if anybody else is out there interested, you can reach out to me or reach out to Jeff, or we got a couple of other people that are sort of involved and um we're open for business open and we're for open business and we're here to have fun and and uh i mean you can see behind us it's 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 we're growing are you we're, blown away we're growing it's a lot of fun yeah i was blown away i was blown away how how early people got here yes yeah I, yeah I, yeah to be fair there is an activity right you're like there's a lot, of, that, no, there's a lot but, of activities but if you're gonna do a watch party you're in a place oh and there's also food there's, free beer and food i free think beer, food, food, but yeah, also you can come right. and Get better at golf or just have fun with the yeah. simulator. Yeah. I, I got to admit, I think this is the way to do a watch party, frankly. I mean, yeah, no. I mean, I think there's something to do. It's a part. It really is a party. It's a party. And if you want to watch the game, fine. If you don't, that's fine, too. If you don't, you, I mean, you, got, you can play pool. We got table ping pong. Yep. Um, they got cornhole. You got to think beer pong's coming. Avenue. Yeah, no, I guarantee you what's going to ha- happen. And we've got our eye on the game. We'll give you some updates as we go. I guarantee you by the end of the game, 
everybody's going to be gathered on the couch. Right. Everybody's going to be hanging out just around hanging here. Out. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, hey, it's eighteen sixteen UConn over Purdue. Uh, first half over yeah. under. Right. First like half over under. First half over under sixty seven and a half. And I always like first half unders, especially yeah. on day one of the Final Four. I told Darren, I've been to sixteen of the last now twenty one Final Fours, and the first half under because teams come out tight. They're playing in a dome, so your depth perception's all fucked up. So 67 and a half is the first half under, but because they played their Saturday, Vegas and Vegas has gotten pretty dialed in on the, that number. I think 67 and a half, it's going to go over. And then 146 is the game. 146, 146 and a half. You got to, you got to. I just heard my name. My foursome just go, got called go, up. Go, I gotta better go. get the hell out of here. I got to go hit some balls. What course are you going to, what course <laughs> are you going to play? I don't know. Whatever they put us on. I think we get one hole before, and then we got to rotate. Go, oh, go, really? get out of here. Do they have Augusta on there? Are you playing? It's yeah, a big week. Right oh, this guy brought his club. Oh, okay. Yeah, Dave's got his clubs. I'm playing golf yeah, tomorrow, but I didn't have my club with me. Thanks all sponsors, and thank you, you guys, for oh. being here and, and everything else. Hey, best of luck to you out on the course, man. Yeah. Hit them straight. Well, unless the I went to go sign up for the long drive competition. As I'm writing my name, I saw someone hit a 320 down the middle. Uh -oh. And I immediately <laughs> stopped writing my name, and I, I'm, I'm done. What? You gave up? Oh, I'm, I'm going to go. All right. Hey, swing it. I had a, a, a friend who has a simulator that came with the house he bought. He's not the biggest golfer in the world, but we were using it one time. He had a party. And the calibration was all fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like that went way or 429 yeah, yards. Like, it was like 60 yards with right. it, like it was hit well enough. He has since had it recalibrated and has bought new clubs and is getting into it. Yeah. And he says, like, oh, you gotta come back over. He's up in Evergreen. So it's like, okay, not really in my normal travel path, but I make him check it out on a rainy day. You know, it's funny watching um, the Ben's game right now. And it's a close game, it's exciting, everybody's watching all that. But compare the excitement sort of like watching this with the women's game yesterday. And 18.7 million viewers was the number I was saw. It, like was that. it 18, 7? 18, 18 and change for wow. sure. Wow. That's pretty awesome. Did you, did you pick up on any of it yesterday? Did yeah, you watch man. I mean, it? uh, it's, it's a, what, what do you think accounts for that, that shift? Is it the personality? I know, Caitlin yes. Clark, 100%. Well, I, I think it, it started because there was a great rivalry between Angel Reese and yeah. Caitlin Clark yeah, yeah. last year. Yeah. That and, was, and that was a really good game. And and then Angel, she was still playing for LSU. She was a little bit hurt. wasn't quite the same. But but then it just went from there from what Caitlin Clark did. Right. So when Don Staley, the coach of South Carolina, gave props to Caitlin Clark, I thought it was one of the most amazing moments in sports history because she rightfully acknowledged – you know what this meant for the entire sport and then when you see that sport competed at the highest of levels at least collegiately you realize how great it actually is it's, it still feels like lightning in a bottle though because she's about to become the first pick in the WNBA the WNBA has had some great players Brianna Stewart Brittany Grant we go down the list right Diane Taurasi it hasn't moved the needle significantly yeah but I think standpoint. I think you just see if you can develop rivalries in a sporting competition, whether it's men or women, people will want well, to right. watch and forever, it, period, if it's a good story. Forever, UConn and Tennessee were the only two women's teams we knew because it was seemingly UConn or Tennessee there every year at Pat Summit. Do you know where I am? Like, it was crazy to see it. South Carolina has gone undefeated. They're one of now six programs. But do you know where I am? And UConn have done it six times. That is nuts, but it's also can make it hard to watch if they're just running through everybody. But, like, on this game right here. Not yeah, to, can you name one player on UConn? Like, on UConn, no. Yeah. On, I, I know Eddie, yeah, Eddie Zach Eady. Right. Zach Eady. Zach Eady, who you know about some yeah, bullshit. I don't even know him. Yeah, Eady, Eddie. No, but you know, the the big you guys know the biggest bullshit as it relates to Zach Eady is that he can't get NIL money because he's Canadian. Wow. Is that, is that right? right? Why? That's a weird rule. The way the law is written or the rules are written, he's you gotta be American. You gotta be American to, to get NIL money. Oh, I didn't That's know that. a weird loophole. Do they just throw oh, cash no, 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 at everybody. It's, 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 you don't have to be American. He's here on a student visa. So if the visa were different. Well, wait a second. Who's the who's the big guy he's going against? That guy's that kid's almost from Bristol, Connecticut, Klingon. How how tall is he? Seven two. So he's more athletic. He's got a Whoa. little bit more. Oh, I think geez. I think he has a little more pro potential. Like the thing about Zach Eady, he came back and he won player of the year again. And there's a big kid named Hunter Dickinson who's really good at Michigan, went to Kansas this year. But talking to people in the know, I said, Oh, it's why aren't these guys, you know, are they the next joker or whatever? Like, no, if these guys were pros, they'd be in the pros. Like, Zach Eady is projected to go 
late in the first round or into the second round because his game doesn't really translate. Well, no. I'll tell you this. I would take Zach Eady as a, a backup to Jokic. To do tomorrow. DeAndre Jordan's job? Maybe. Yeah. I mean, the, the Nuggets are struggling in that. I'll take my chances with you to seven foot four. Well, they got Zeke for three more years after this. <laughs> yeah. I'm fine to move on from Zeke. I'm not, I'm not holding my breath for Zeke. That's not a big deal. The the tricky thing though with like the idea that even Caitlin Clark, who's gonna be featured plenty, ESPN will push her to the front of the line. We'll see plenty of Indiana Fever games. The the reason it's not gonna move the needle is maybe to your point about rivalries. Like, I don't care if the fever are playing the aces in general. Just like the best soccer player that's likely ever walked the earth plays in America. Did you know he played the Rapids Saturday night? I do. 2-2 two, two, draw. 2-2 yeah, two, two draw and Messi yes. came in. But there was some excitement when Messi first got there. And my dad's from Argentina. I've got an Argentina jacket with me. I still haven't even watched that many more games. I've subscribed to the MLS package. But the league, I'd love to see what the numbers are. But I know that, ask anybody you know that's a sports fan, have they started watching way more MLS because Messi's here? No. We're not going to watch more WNBA because of Caitlin Clark. We might catch her highlights and be like, oh, she had 40 tonight. Against Diana Taurasi. No, we'll but I don't see. think it's going to change people's habits. I'm in a promo on a bet I made on ESPN. I get a dollar for every three that goes in. Oh. Yeah, see, it's, it's hard for me sometimes to watch the college game because I'm so used to the NBA and... I mean, I get it. They're they're in college. They're not in the NBA. I mean, I I do get it. They missed too many shots. For yeah, you? basically. <laughs> basically. I mean, it kind what of. What are you boils. doing? I'm, Make it. Uh, but I'm just spoiled because I just watch so. I mean, not only do I watch a lot of NBA, but I watch the best team. We were right. the best team in the world, or they were last year. That sort of thing. I, yeah, uh, that's the thing. You're seeing the absolute cream of the crop, yeah. the upper echelon, the best basketball being played in the world, right, on a nightly basis. Right. If I was just watching the. Travel. Washington Wizards, you know, perhaps I'd have a deeper appreciation yeah. of this. This would be a hell of a lot closer. But it does go to show, like, I'll give you a, a quick story. Like, the Nuggets, the best team arguably in the world, right? They were caught up in the women's um, semifinals. They were arguing about, oh, well, was it a foul? Was it not a foul in the semifinal game? Michael Malone comes in after the win on Saturday night um, against the Hawks. And he starts talking about the women's game. Did he say it was a foul? Like, what he, he, he wasn't even like no. asked about it. He like just came in and said, Oh man, what? Oh, he was like, Who won? What a game. And started going on about Caitlin Clark. And so you, you did, you are seeing something a little bit unusual. Um, Jokic came in the other night. He was late to come in because oh, he right. was watching DJ, the kid from, the kid uh, from NC, State, NC State, who's, you know, heavy. Yeah. I'll just be nice about it. Do you know that people actually came to him and were starting to ask him, do you want to play in the NFL? Yeah, that, put that kid at D-line. Put no, but, no, but hold on. DJ Foster. Time out. Time out. Six D-line. nine. Six nine. 300 pounds. <laughs> six, six nine's a little Just on field goal big. block. Yeah. Yeah. What? What? Are you going to keep a roster spot for a field goal blocker? No. And, and by the way, are you really saying football is that easy? No, it's not. Just ha- no, I agree, by yeah, the way. I yeah, agree. Yeah, yeah. But just because you have a certain body type, you're I mean, have that's to find a... the right position for him. To me, six nine is a bit too tall. Yeah, he's so, six nine, three thirty. So the six six guy, who's actually very shifty, can become a good tight end. Can become a, maybe an edge player. But uh, a six nine, you're, everyone's going to get underneath you and just absolutely destroy you. Right. Because it's... it's about your pad level. It's about getting low. It's about leverage. And when you have none of it and you've never played before, you're going to get destroyed. And guess yeah, but, what? He's but... out on a basketball court. Guess who he's out there with? basketball looking guy yeah and and like aaron gordon it looks like a big guy because yeah. he is a big guy but if you put aaron gordon out on a football field he, he would get skinny his, he, he, looks would, skinny. he would look skinny yeah. he would get like one he's guy tall I think he one like guy who to me was like oh my god that's a big guy was randy gregory but then you see him on the football field and you're like oh maybe he's not that big maybe he's, he's still just, pretty big he's, well like well, when you see mike mcglinch he's six eight right and has a basketball background and went to notre dame as a tight end you think, okay, why couldn't LeBron, who is the same height and same weight, but way faster, be the most well, dominant tight end? Like, you know who would be good? Guys, funny, I was just going to bring up Dave Bruton's here. So, Dave, would you say you weigh roughly how much less than you did as a, a pro? Two. Two, two pounds. Two or three pounds, yep. But 
My comment today, he looks great. No, no, he's he saying, what, what's your weight difference from playing no, to today? No, two pounds. That's what he just said. Yeah. Oh, two, two pounds. pounds. Oh, you weigh 202 and now you weigh 200? It looks different now than you it look used like to. shit. No. <laughs> That's what he's trying to say. What are you saying? You used to be chiseled when he'd see with your shirt off. No, <laughs> oh, well, he doesn't. You look different to me, at least. I mean, you just. You look great. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you look unbelievable. <laughs> Appreciate it. But but there is a size when you had to play your position on special teams and safety. That's, I mean, it had to be different. You must be proportioned differently now. Yeah, I don't have a thick neck. That's, that's it's the, the neck. neck. It really the neck is. thing gives, gives a lot. And I even tell myself, dang, I need to work on my neck. I need to yeah. wear a helmet while yeah. I treat patients. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you wear a helmet around. They, they exercise your neck. You yeah. do neck exercise. And you're always hitting. Like, your neck gets big. And then you see the pictures of yourself back then. You're like, Who's that guy? Yeah. You know what are you compared to your playing weight right now? Well, I I came into the league as a receiver around this weight, and then I gained weight to play tight end, so right. I gained about twenty five pounds. So I played around 235, 240. I'm back to like two fifteen now. Yeah, and you look great. You, you now. look unbelievable. Thanks, man. Yo, know, you look great. Chad looks great. Uh, Tyler. When was the last time you guys ran into Tyler Columbus? He's pretty skinny. Yeah. Or Nalen. Yeah. You know Nalen's back in yeah. town too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're like. Why didn't he come tonight? <laughs> I tried. I tried with Tommy. Did you try I, to get no, him? No, I really the rules. I, 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 I asked Tom to do all sorts of stuff, and I won't stop trying. Yeah. But Tommy's just his own, yeah, his own guy. Deal. I love Tom. He, he's living back here. He coached football. He was the offensive line coach for MIT last year. That's right. I do remember talking to him about that a little bit. <laughs> Bunch of dummies so, over uh, there. Yeah. Talk. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, dumb so kids. I'm texting anything. him. Oh, I, I, know what, I know what it is. Um, the Broncos had some sort of reunion for like. They're Hall of Famers. Of course, he didn't show up. It was the uh, oh, second Super Bowl. He didn't show up to that? Yeah, first, second Super Bowl. To honor the Hall of – Oh, second, second, Super Bowl. Second, second Super Bowl. Second Super Bowl. Okay. Yeah. But but he will not show up for, like, anything. Wow. Anyways, he does have a big banner of himself inside the training facility because they do have the Hall of – It's all Hall Ring of, of Fame. Ring, Ring of Fame. Fame. Okay. Ring so, of Fame, Hall of Fame. Yeah. Oh, and then they have something else for the Hall of – Anyways, whatever. So there's a huge banner of Tom. Yeah. And so I take a picture of it. I'm like, hey, I take a picture of him in the banner. I sent him a text. Tell all the nerds I said hi and sent it to him. He had his phone, his iPad up, and he gets his email, and he was showing them offensive line film when that thing, uh -huh. say hi to all the nerds, came in. It's really not that funny of a story. It took it's too hilarious. Long to, nah. It took too long to get to. Party hard. But, uh, you know, Tom. Wait, so who saw all that? The, the, the o -linemen. All the nerds. Oh, okay. All the O-linemen at MIT. Oh. The story actually sucked. I'm sorry I got no, into it. I got that bad, way... Man. I mean, is MIT just... that hard of a school? Janitors can solve the equations That's on the true. fucking chalkboard. Matt Damon. How do you like them apples? How do you like them? I just like realistic stories. Why like are you that. wearing your Purdue gear? Uh, Brother-in-law is the head coach of the football team there. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Wait, say that again? Brother-in-law. I don't is... think I knew that Ryan's your brother-in-law. Yeah. So... I've got a funny Ryan Walter story. Are you sure? Because I just bombed. And if I can't tell a story, yeah. you got no chance. Ryan Walters played at CU. His dad played <laughs> on the championship Good team that yep. was there. And so I see Ryan Walters at the combine last year. He just got the job. Came over from being defensive coordinator. And we're talking about CU and Jordan Dyson, who's the scouts there. And I mean, Matt Russell. There's all these CU people. You're losing the story already. Yeah. But so, Too I much mean, background. Uh, okay. Like, I walked into the bar. There's a picture of the Pope. The Pope was wearing a red hat. I don't know why it wasn't white. But let me tell you about the rabbi that was there, too. The story's only going to get less exciting. But oh, don't even worry about well, it. Well, no. So I say, Ryan, oh, we're talking. It's a big Al's my, my then four-year-old's godfather. He goes, he's my godfather. So fun fact. Hey! Guess. Fun fact. More of a fun fact. Fun, fun fact. Story. Funny story. Yeah. It's, it's tough to call it a funny story until yeah. when the background the is like 10 times longer than the actual story. Right. A little too much setup. We're godfathers. God's sons. Gotcha. Whatever. Nobody was listening. It's 28-25. Nah, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad, Brandon. Right? UConn. I'm joking. How's your lobster? So wait, how does this? I'll let you know when it gets it's here. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. How do you know when it's? They're gonna be. Uh, we let the, we let the good down. folks know that this is where we're hanging. Yeah, out. He said he's it's easy. They'll find me. I'm the. All right. So over under the in the first half, <laughs> 67 and a half. I think it's going over. <laughs> Dude, well, hold on a second. Yeah, there's only one other one. Hey, hey, my real estate agent, Dom. Black guy grew up in Wyoming. So he's one of seven. Yeah, he didn't stick out. That's what he said. <laughs> it wasn't 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 too 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 far from that. Um, it is uh 30 to 25 UConn. <laughs> Nate, what do you think of the game so far? Close game, two number one seeds battling it out. Uh 
You know, the big fucker versus all the other dudes. Well, and, let me know. ask you this, because you went to Syracuse. Yeah. How crazy is it that Syracuse still has the one championship that Bayheim won, and UConn in 99 won their first, and since then has now won four more and could have a, a fifth. Yeah, I fucking hate the UConn. I mean, I, I'm definitely with... Also, with Stores, Connecticut is not a cool college town. It's not a cool place. The fact um, that they're about to get their sixth title... You know, it's a basketball haven, I guess. You yeah. know, they've always been good. Yeah. Um, you know, they won the national they, championship last year, obviously. I don't know. I don't know why they're so good. I don't either because they don't they don't have the <laughs> NIL that Kentucky or Kansas or Duke or North Carolina or now Arkansas, some of these schools with a lot of money, USC. Yeah. They don't have that. They've had three different head coaches and won titles with all of them. I don't know. How's um where's Sam Hartman gonna go? Notre Dame quarterback. What fastest, about him? fastest quarterback at the combine. Was he? Oh, at the combine because Penix ran at a pro day, right? No, fast quarterback at the combine. Yeah, Sam Penix Hartman. Didn't run. Yeah. Sam Hartman is the only quarterback that ran at the combine. <laughs> oh. So his whole life, oh, Lord. I was the fastest oh. quarterback at the combine in my year. Really? He was the only one? Only one. I did not pay attention to that at all. Man, I thought he I thought he showed such promise at the beginning of the season. And then when we got into the ACC, it just showed his card. Like every ACC team just right, so. Bad. Had him, had why him. why doesn't Notre Dame see this is this is what fascinates me about like Notre Dame. Like I don't know why they don't get the best of the best year in, year out. Like, South Bend fucking Indiana. Is that it? It's like okay, you get a scholarship to Notre Dame, you're probably getting a scholarship to somewhere warm. Like that's it, huh? 100%. It's just like that. 100. And it's the they would say they used to say it's the highest pressure job in college football, right. Notre Dame quarterback. But but it's just I don't know, man. It, Tradition so those, right now, tradition doesn't stick. Tradition doesn't matter. Tradition doesn't matter. And you know, if you can come to South Bend for a year versus four years, like it's just the whole Yeah, he was in Columbia, South shift. Carolina before that. Like, so yeah. what does matter now? That's Money. it. Money. You guys it's, like that? It's ultimate it's ultimately a free a free agent free for all in college. But why do you not like it? Because it's ruining the tradition of college football? Because in a free market society, if a kid can make a hundred grand more at one school. I don't really give a shit if he picks Florida over Tennessee. Because I believe in the sanctity of getting a real education and student athletes. I believe that college should be a place where kids can go play football and learn and be kids. I don't think it should be a professional fucking sport. That's what it's turning into. Yeah. Not only that, but look, you look up the road at CU. These are mercenaries who come in. They hit the portal. They're not happy where they go. There is no loyalty. You don't stick it out. You don't learn anything. Yeah, and that's why I don't like it, Brandon. It's I'm, because it's you're turning them into professionals. Well, yeah, I hate it. Can can you develop team chemistry with guys that are no. just? You don't Absolutely think so? Not. No, I agree. Absolutely I agree not. with that. Absolutely no, not. Sh no shot. Yeah, like, they've got team chemistry does not matter. So how do you develop a great? How does CU develop a great team? Then? Or do, is the answer they don't? Really? You gotta try to find guys that, who are gonna they, stay. They went, they so went, if they have a great team, it's that year. It's not. It's not gonna be sustained. You're not they, gonna see a Alabama, Alabama, Alabama type deal. Their their O line is gonna be fascinating to see because they did exactly what I thought. I mean, the Seton kid's almost the anomaly. And Tyler, who you work with, said he's like, I don't, I just, maybe a high, high, hyperbolic, but that might be the best O line prospect he's ever seen come out of high school. But all the other guys have like 25 or 30 starts at bigger schools, Houston. Yeah, so like Jordan Seaton, for example, maybe. their big old lineman that, Seaton, that Sanders yeah. got. Jordan Seaton. What stops him from going to Alabama next year? No, he very well may be at Alabama next yeah. year, especially if his head coach leaves. Yeah. Which is crazy because a lot of times your first year isn't great at a school. You have to work right. into it. You have to play behind someone. You have to prove that you can do it. You have, you to, have go to be able to handle fun. class and school. Yeah, like, exactly. There's a lot of things. To throw so these it. guys, if they get stuck behind someone after one year or something doesn't go right, they're like, fuck it, yep, I'm out. Deuces. And that could actually be, if they would have stuck it out, they might end up making it to the league because they stayed. And now they're going to leave and they're going to get stuck behind another guy. It's going to be an adjustment period with, you know, the same process again, trying to feel out a new school, new city, new classes, new roommate, all this shit. Did you face any kind of weird, like, Stuff in the NFL because you went to Notre Dame, like expectations were different at all because you were in Notre Dame. Oh, this was pros. considered a nerd, but I embraced it. I mean, just that, yeah, that was it. I mean, yeah, I didn't get, and obviously, a lot of guys like F Notre Dame, F Notre Dame, all the Michigan <laughs> State guys, Michigan guys, you know, Bama, whatever, just fuck Notre Dame. That's pretty much <laughs> what. Well, all right, so what guys in general were the most annoying or the most <laughs> full of themselves from what college they went to in general? Ke Kevin Vickerson for me. Where'd Vic go? Michigan State. So he oh. was the one who planted the flag my freshman year in the middle of oh, Notre Dame man. Stadium. So I heard that shit every freak 
freaking week. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's Nate for you. I don't know, man. It was usually, you know, Miami guys, probably. Miami guys. Yeah. You had a bunch of them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Nate Webster. Well, yeah, DJ. DJ. Who else? Yeah, Clinton, Nate Webster. Clinton Nate Portis. Nate Webster. Portis, right. Yeah. Um, but, but all the Florida guys, you know? It wasn't just Miami guys. Yeah, it it's a Florida, Florida. It can be a Florida yeah, thing. Yeah, it's a Florida well, rivalry, right? How'd you get along with Miami guys? Oh, I, I don't think I put Willis was probably the only Miami guy that I played. And then Orlando. Yeah. And – and Miami, I mean, and Orlando's way Canadian. His career, and then Orlando. <laughs> Orlando would rather no. talk to you about hockey than college. I, well, football. I just didn't know and how the Catholics kind of mixed things. Each other. Well, so that's, that, that's, that, a, that's a fan thing. Like the players don't give a players shit. Players don't the, care about maybe that. Maybe some of the Catholic right. players right. did. But yeah, but at that time, Notre Dame had no. Miami had more Catholics on their team. Yeah, than right. Notre Dame. How yeah. about this though? And I, I think it may have come up with the Jones signing the safety, and re-signing little Jordan and the D lineman. The Broncos have like. Six Longhorns and six Sooners, all of the. You know what's amazing right to me about no matter what you do in the NFL, though, you are always defined by your college and your draft position. It's crazy. That's oh, not no, true. No, no, no. Once you're in the locker room, you're defined on what you're doing every day. Maybe you define them that the way. Fans but do. What? No, the fans. Oh, do not. oh my God! It's it's. If I have to hear about Chris Harris being undrafted. One more time, and then if you look—that's a narrative outside. Yeah, but nobody talks about what he did at Kansas, or he's not tied to KU. It doesn't right? matter at all. No, I mean, I tied to KU. It didn't, it w- didn't when I was there. It was about how you're playing, what you're doing on a daily basis, what kind of teammate you are. I think every fucking day, like they, nobody talked about. So oh, it, only, it only come becomes, on, pick it up, man. You went to USC. Nobody's all right, doing all right. that. So it only happens when you're doing media stuff. Like yeah. if you're introduced to something, or somebody yeah. else brings it's it up. A, in my experience, yes. I mean, of course, you have rivalries. Guys are talking about, you know. In the locker room and getting excited when yeah. their team's playing each other. Yeah, Alabama's shit. playing Georgia. But your worth is not based on where you went. If you're Tim Tebow, if you're Johnny Manziel, something like that, that's going to follow you. RG3, if you're a Heisman winner or like, a, you know, what Caitlin Clark is, she's going to – her college career will follow her forever. Yeah. But that's – I think that's a small There's number. There's very few guys who – or, you know, players who have that sort of baggage with them. You only have one first round draft pick each year, right? right. And it's, it's and very rarely is it a top five, top ten guy where it's like all eyes on you. Everybody's going in there trying to prove themselves every day, yeah. you know. Dave, did you get stereotyped a little bit too much as just a special teams guy? Oh, all the time. You think so? I think, I think all the time. I remember, I remember my rookie year. Doc was hurt. I was the backup strong safety. I was going to start starting the season. They moved Darcel to strong safety because he was the higher draft pick, and I got. Stuck with special teams, and I got moved to free safety. So, yeah, I've always been labeled that. Like, you're so valuable on special teams, so valuable. Get it? Like, got it? I could also play. Like, oh, no, play. no doubt, no right. zero doubt about right. it. And it, it always, it always. Hey, felt tell, like, tell them how you feel about special teams, Derek. Well, I don't have to tell. Uh, I don't have to tell you. I'll tell you what the NFL thinks of special teams. Oh shit! She. You have no chance making. If you're yeah, just a special team player, you have no chance making. They ruined, they ruined it. What yeah. about the new kickoff rule? Yeah, it's horrible, bro. That's bad for you guys. Oh, that well, absolutely. Yeah. You can't shine. You yeah. can't. You can't attack a kickoff. You're sitting there. It's gonna five be good yards for returners. I think it's gonna be good for returners. Maybe. If, but there's if no if holes. There's no. There's nothing there. There's no twisting. I think all it takes is nothing, dude. Yeah. You yeah, can't, there's, there's you no can't cover there's a kick. Rules. Guys like him would cover a kick in ways that like oh, were yeah. special, right? Oh, no doubt and about you, it. You can't do Thank that anymore, you. man. It sucks, dude. Appreciate it. Um, oh, look at that. Hey. Oh, we got some food. Coming coming in. In. Thank you, brother. There you go. Right on. Look at that. Okay. Local lobster. Thank you. Local lobster. Yeah, hey, awesome. talk about local lobster for a second. Yeah, local lobster. Yeah, yeah, lobster. Yeah, yeah, lobster. We're just a food truck out of Northern Colorado. We run around to all different breweries, just bringing in good beef from Saco, Maine, trying to make it happen out here in Colorado for everyone. Why lobster? I'm a huge seafood fan. I love seafood. And uh, some of my buddies had this. Oh, dude. They that bread smacking. So we took it from them, and uh, we started running with it. Are any of these cheap asses paying for it, or is it all freebies tonight? There's a lot of cheap asses, but... <laughs> You know, what do you do? At a members-only yeah. golf club, you got a bunch of yeah. cheap asses. Oh. No, everyone's paying. It's been a great night. Thank Delicious. you so much. Oh, my God. So, oh, if people, oh, if people want to get a hold of you to have you come to an event, what do you do? At Local Lobster LLC on Instagram or Facebook. And then you can also go to locolobster.com, and you can reach us that way. And these lobsters were, were where two days ago? In Saco, Maine. In the wow. water. In the water. In Hell the yeah. water. That matters. I taste it, man. It's <laughs> fucking delicious. Super fresh. Wow, if you're right watching here. right now, John from Gorilla Sports has local lobster logo up. So memorize it. Wow. Hey, if you were to open a food truck, D Mac, what kind would it be? Ooh, good question. It would be Italian. 
Would it? No, I don't know. <laughs> what if, what if, what if, I, I mean, you know what I love? I'll tell you this. First of all, lobster, I freaking love lobster. lobster. But I'm a, I love breakfast burritos. If I could have one food before I go to the electric chair, be it, a it would be a breakfast burrito. Nice. I just love it. I love, I love breakfast food. I love eggs. But that's part of my problem getting fat because everything that I love is like bad. You know, it, I, and I have no big green balance. chili, big green chili on the breakfast burrito. You like that? Uh, not really. Yeah. My, no. wife, my wife loves no. a There's smothered no green chili. So what goes burrito. in your breakfast burrito? Say what? Say it again. What do you put in your breakfast burrito? Well, what I would love to put in my breakfast yeah, burrito what's is your ideal ingredient? every single meat you could possibly think of. Oh, and really? I'd throw the hash browns in there with the like three, four eggs and, and just a big fat warm tortilla i mean it was just a soft taco sort of deal okay i mean it's 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 ridiculous but none of that stuff is healthy for you or not for me so you know i gotta watch myself i can't do it so now you know what i do i i have a veggie <laughs> omelet almost every day with egg whites wow and wow. that's what i do basically Boring. every day. I know. <laughs> that's oh discipline God. but yeah well you don't have that's little... the trick though i mean you no, know I'm kidding. you don't have and... little kids anymore you guys do the amount of shitty but ta good tasting cereal I eat is not great for a guy that just and turned 46. If, if we're just talking but, like smart diet stuff. I'm basically plant based with a touch of meat um, for dinner time. Okay. And still I still drinking a glass of whole milk at dinner. I I gave up milk like three years ago. I don't drink milk whatsoever. Right. Um, if I got to drink milk, it'd be soy milk or almond milk or something like that. Okay. I just stay away from milk. I do love eggs, but I try to use egg whites. So it's not all eggs. I'll yeah. I'll do um. Or egg yolks good for you though? No, they, you, they can. You just but there's there's a cholesterol. There's yeah, like there's a whole genetic the thing to it. Like everybody produces like responds to it differently. It's it's a lot deeper than this lobster. It is. By the it way. is. I'll, deeper, I'll give you yeah. that. I know that. But cholesterol is not necessarily bad. For I know there's good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. It's not yep. all the same. ACL versus LDL. But I've I've I have high I had high cholesterol, so I I know that. Yeah. So I just have yeah. to be relatively smart about it so but but i would just get in trouble you know what would kill me too is sodas and sugars and unnecessary yeah. stuff and it's just about finding as far as i'm concerned just a healthy so what's batch. your what's your snack on the bike what's that when you're on the bike ride what what's your snack what do you eat i use i used to i carry well goo sometimes just like some goo like runners would use but i'll carry a couple of protein bars with me i love think think protein bars and a little peanut butter or chocolate thing, protein bar, something like that. You ever thought of doing anything carb heavy on, on like the bike? what? Like heck, I my thing is Sour Patch Kids or trolleys. Like okay, the, the, the carb carbs in those. Right, and I'm getting like, I'm getting to the point now, physically fitness wise. I'm I'm about well, I hit my 40 pound, so I'm 164. Yeah, and I want to go a little bit lower. I want to get to about 155. I was doing triathlons. Yeah, and the one thing that is the hardest thing to do in a triathlon. Swimming. Yeah. yeah. Have you done have you done much swimming? I can't swim. You can't swim? I can't swim. You haven't you... learned yet? Nope. And Notre Dame, you had mandatory swim classes. And Are it you took being me serious? The last two weeks to even get in the water. Nope. Don't do it. So what happens if you jump in a lake? Wait One, a second. Why am I jumping in a lake if what, I can't swim? What happens if you fall in a lake? Why am I near a fucking lake? <laughs> what happens if you fall off a boat? Why the fuck am I on a boat? <laughs> no, I get motion sick too. I don't do water. Me and water don't. don't wow. Do that. So really, no swimming at all. No swimming at all. I'll jump in the pool with the kids, and I'll go under the water and just do this, and then come up like, shit, I just drowned. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So do you have little panic attacks if if you were? I I could. Yeah, I used to. I used wow. To say, have, you, have you never been on a cruise? Nope. And you're likely not Dude, going. that's nope. is this like a full on phobia sort yep. of deal? Yep. Don't do it. Wow. Okay. Yep. Oh, his name was like a championship state like a championship swimmer. Well, I hope his ass is gonna save me after you talk about I'm jumping in a lake. All of a sudden I'm near a lake and just but jumped in it off for, a boat. For those interested, oh over under God. 67 and a half in the first half. Is it really? Mm -hmm. You've got to be kidding me. Nope. It's at 66. 66. So, so this is it right here. Bucket here. This bucket here doesn't travel. travel. And they didn't call it, and he missed it. And Purdue, wow. Purdue was plus three and a half. So UConn, wow! So they just hit an under. They hit the under, and UConn covers the first half. They hit an under on an in and out basket. Wow! Every, everybody in Vegas that had that or is watching at home on their that's a bad beat on their right app. there. So at halftime, UConn nope. is at 30, 36 30 UConn over Purdue, 
And we're at our watch along at Avid Caddy Golf. We're glad that you're here with us. Food from Local Lobster, Vacuit, Seltzer, and Vodka. Wow. Seltzer and Vodka. It's crazy. Great idea. Great idea. Um, we got a couple of uh, kegs going for the beers. We have a long drive contest going. Yeah, I need to get up in there. I need to get up uh, in there see what I, I can put mind. out there. Are you getting in the contest? Yeah, I'm getting in there. All right. I wouldn't mind getting in the long drive contest. Just to you see have no it's shot. Like they, they, they got somebody over 300 yards Brandon, you might win the short drive contest. I played in the Live Golf Pro-Am at the Super Bowl. Now, that was a flu. Okay. That don't mean shit. That just means you played in it. That don't oh, mean I, know. I played in your tournament, too. <laughs> Me and Ryan Harris had a grand old time at your tournament. <laughs> you just, you're There's a lot of shitty golfers that play in the yeah, What does that mean? Yeah. So you I, played in a golf tournament. They got somebody who already went over 300 yards. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm just right. saying you got yeah, they, they, they got close to pin. Let me let, let, me, let, me, uh, yeah. let me let it rip. Let me get warmed up. Let me get warmed up. I don't know how to get in on it, but you sign up. You just go and sign up. Okay. Go. I mean, our friend Vanessa's going right now. Yeah, I don't even know where I am. These Look lobster rolls like are delicious, man. Are they, what's it Told taste you. like? This is like you know the bread, like buttery, yep, you're like soft, the bread like is bread the, the, and that lobster, the lobster fresh, crisp. It's, it's good, huh? Yeah. Because it was in the freaking Atlantic Ocean two days ago. Yeah. And now it's in your stomach. Oh, yeah. My brother, who sadly, well, it's funny, my, sadly, very sadly, my brother did drown. It, oh. He did. It's it's terrible. Um, Sorry, dude, so I, I preface this story. I'm not saying it's funny, but he's the smartest guy I knew. He was a chemical engineering major and business major at the University of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. He um, made millions uh, trading derivatives on Wall Street before he went and got his, his MD and he was the head of radiology at Burlington Hospital back in Massachusetts. He's smart. Smartest guy yeah. I knew. Loved boating, loved fishing. Got his lobster license and figured out how to lobster. So I've been with my brother. He has 10 pots. And you can keep a certain amount of pots before you become a commercial lobsterman. It's so like, you can. like how many plants you can have of going to grow marijuana. You can you recreational lobster. So one of the most amazing experiences of my life wow. is going out with him on his boat to his lobster pots and pulling out, I, I swear to God, like 30 lobsters in an afternoon. What would he wow. do with them? Cook them immediately. He would only bring home, and that's another thing. You can't sell them. You yeah. can't have your lobster you can party. Your neighbors, but... Yeah, you can cook them or give them away. So he would only catch what he would eat basically that day. Yeah. That's it. It was just, it was just a, a hobby, basically. So he wouldn't keep them. That was it. I mean, he could cook them up and save lobster and just pass it out or whatever, that sort of thing. But you can't sell it because you'd be violating rules. You can't have private dinner parties. It was just amazing to just go and catch something, put it in a pot, eat it. It was unbelievable. It was delicious. It's a great experience to like, I don't know how to fucking, well, you wouldn't fish at all, I suppose. No, I don't. No, fish. you won't be my, on my a My dad boat. loves fishing. I don't. He's a hundred yards from the shore. He's like, what? anything? Hey, fishing's boring to me. All right, they're giving away prizes now. Oh, I've got a raffle ticket. If, are you in the raffle? I ain't they handed me one. Oh, get it. I get boat. one. Go pay attention. Here, go pay attention. Go get yourself a drink. I'll I'll hold down the fort. Okay. Go ahead, take a break. Take a break. Come on, Jeff. Hey, Dom, come here. Dom, come here. We'll fill the gap with Dom. Sit down. Oh, sit down. No, grab the microphone. Oh no, what am I doing? What am I doing? We're gonna talk. What are you talking about? Do you care about the raffle? Yeah, I would love to win. Oh, do you want to pay attention? All right, go go pay attention. What are we talking about? Obviously. No, we're going to talk about Ed Prey, the real estate. Okay, I'll talk about it. Okay. Yeah, give. Oh, God, Darren. Wait, I got to bring Bruton in here because I. he was like, there's two black people in here. Woo! And, <laughs> I love it. I don't know where my ticket's at. It's in one of these pockets. I know. I'm planning on winning. Oh, my goodness. Well, this is embarrassing. Yeah, are we in the camera? No, you're, we're we're going right now. Oh God, okay. we're on right now. I don't need it. I don't need. I don't need the ticket anymore. I'll All right, don't worry about. It. Don't worry about the ticket. I will, I'll All wait. right, I want to introduce everybody to you. This is Dominic Miller, my guy from Hello. Ed Prather Real Estate. Okay, here, bring the mic way okay, over, way close. There you go. Good. Perfect. Talk about. Let's just have it out. Selling and helping me sell and buy a home. It's been a great experience. How'd it go? It's been a great experience. You know, there's a lot of moving pieces when you're trying to sell a home, buy a home. Um, and Darren's been great. You know, we've got um, we've got a lot of volatility in the market. We got a lot of inventory coming up. Um, and you know, I got it was a week, I think, a week on market. Yep. Week on, uh, market. on well, weekend we had two offers. We had another one that was kind of there, but right, three days. 
three days on, we got, you know, over list price. And when you start getting to the inspections, when things get a little funky, right? So you've got to manage like what a buyer wants, what a seller wants. And I think we got to walk away with a pretty, pretty favorable position. Yeah. Um, best case is, um, you know, when you're trying to sell, you got to go somewhere to buy. It's like, where the heck do you start living? Right. So I'm sure Darren's talked about it. Well, we, well, we did make an offer. Yes. And, and how interesting was that? Well, <laughs> it was interesting because it was a place that, first of all, we looked at a bunch of places and it's interesting developing a relationship because you don't know me. I don't know you. We just got to figure each other out a little bit. Right. So we looked at a bunch of spots and I think you started to get an idea of what we were all about. Yes. But the place that we looked at probably caught you a little bit by surprise <laughs> that we were actually interested. Yeah. In because what we were kind of looking for wasn't this place. But what we saw with the place that we liked kind of harkened back to our roots because we love skiing right. and other sort of stuff. So there were, there were elements of the house that you would not have known had we not really seen it. We hadn't had that conversation. Sure. But we knew the place would need work. We right. knew the place right. we were going to have to put some money into it. And we were willing to do that. And the place had been on the market for six months <laughs> yeah i mean yeah. nobody was gonna buy no, this place. not a chance and it's still active oh of course it is there's no way there's no like, way there's no and way. we we also knew if we bought this place we were gonna have a hard time reselling it, it if we ever way. wanted to do that sure so it was like a big decision so in order to make it work we knew we had to come in way under right we knew it and you knew it too yeah and we and all it, knew it. yeah and it wasn't like you're offering something crazy no no it was so I, long. it was probably 40 grand under list price, right. something like that. Yeah. And and the, and the price had dropped several times in this particular property. Sure. But like, what did they think? Like, what did they think? So here's a long story <laughs> short. Yeah, we yeah. make an offer. And if like uh -huh. the offer's insulting, if you don't like it, just say no. You got to come with something else. And seriously, had <laughs> they said that to us, we probably would have come up. We were talking about it. Right. We were talking about it. But. They came back with a counter, <laughs> and the counter was like five grand. I think it was four. Four grand. I think it was four. I mean, it was like ridiculous. Yes. And it showed like, oh, they are willing to come down, but, but this was like absurd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so insulting. It was, but but because we were with Ed Prather, thank you. We we had other off uh, other options. 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 Yes. It was the next day after getting insulted yeah and it was insulting like they didn't call back they never call back no that's the weirdest thing is you're trying to negotiate and it's like hey we've got something he's like yeah just uh negotiating it yourself come up a little bit more but but you never heard from him yet never again still and still haven't still haven't we and like multiple times we call him hey we've got someone interested in like nothing nothing at all the whole time. nothing nothing so the next day next day we found the place that we bought yeah which this, was way more expensive than the place that we were looking yeah. at. It was kind of the opposite of what you were looking at. Originally. But but it doesn't need, it's good. Beautiful. I mean, it's like move in ready, ready to go high ceilings, beautiful brownstone walk up, like can't ask for much more. No, I mean, we're going to put like no money. Curtains. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get curtains. <laughs> Which is a really funny negotiation. Yeah. <laughs> because it's funny, like once you agree on the big stuff, it is pretty comical what little stuff you know kind of comes down to right and and she may even leave some of the i don't know what she's gonna do i mean she can do whatever she wants yeah 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 but um but it was it was so what was your take on that whole process working with me, me and my wife well it's great you know um I, I was telling darren and kim too like on the sell side it's 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 an interesting complex because you're managing so much at one time um but on the sell side everything's kind of like out of you know it's kind of like outside the playing field like we're not meeting all the time we're doing a lot of communication to the phone and email um, but the best part's like the buy side because you get to really get to know people, interact, and understand what you know their individualities and and what they're looking after and what they're searching for. And the, I mean, the best part I told Darren after we got dinner after we did our final walk, and the best part's like you know looking at these properties and like seeing the excitement on people. That's like what gets me jazzed up. Like you know I'm doing something big for someone, making a big impact, and that's I mean it's been incredible. And like couldn't have asked for better clients than Darren and Kim. Made the process super easy, and it was it was, it was a good time, man. It was a really good time. And we are, dude. We are friends for life. Oh, I promise so fun. you that. I would love that. I love it. Definitely. No so doubt fun. about it. And you're here with a few folks? Yeah, I brought a, I brought like six or seven. Okay. Six or seven. And we're having some cocktails and some beers or, or not. 
Yeah. And the lobster, I don't know. I haven't, haven't got a chance to yet, but I heard they're great. They were in the Atlantic Ocean like yesterday. Okay. okay. They're here today. The guy was bringing over like a little bruschetta. Inside that that's one. my guy from uh, Journey Spice Company. So oh, that's Andon, who's a big fan of what we do on the podcast. Uh-huh. And he's got his own company. Okay. So one of the coolest things about this podcast, and Ed Prather, listen, Ed was our Ed was here earlier today too. By was the he way, really? He was. He oh, had an bummer. event over at Top Golf. Yeah, but he was never going to stay. Yeah. But yeah, but that's yeah. okay. <laughs> he, he's over in Lakewood. He's, he's got, got two young yeah, kids, yeah. and you know. So, I knew he wasn't going to stay, but that <laughs> okay. that's cool. We okay. love we love Ed. That's a great guy. And um, Ed's been with me for a couple of years, and he's the first one to sort of jump in. And say, okay, I will spend some money with what you're doing. Yeah. It's like, wow. Like, that was such a big deal for us. And then uh, Avocati had this space, and that made sense for them, too. And now we're finding, hopefully, we'll see how it goes, other partners that we can all be part of sure. doing this digital thing. Uh-huh. And, you know, it's just so organic. Now, listen, I, could, I couldn't do a thing without working for Altitude Sports Radio 92.5. Yeah. I couldn't do a thing, and they're a great partner with Ed as well. Yes. But what's amazing about Ed um, is that he's, I mean, it's not less than, it's in addition to. Sure. And so we're looking just for more partners like that, period. But nothing, literally nothing happens without Altitude. Yeah. Cronky Sports has been incredible. Altitude has been amazing. And it's brought folks like us together, which is incredible, too. And you so, can't ask for anything other than that. Yeah, it's man. Best. It's just about partnerships. So I'll let yep. you go. Thank you, Darren. I'll let you go, Dom. Thank You're the you best. Much. Dominic Miller, edprather.com, and um, and there you go. Thank you. I'll let you go. All right. I'll let you go. go. You go. I'll just keep talking to myself, and I'll say, hey, Mark, come here. Mark, 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 Mark. Oh, he's eating? Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. I'm getting everybody on. Hey, is Jesse here? Oh, well, then you're here. You're, you're the best I can do from Gorilla Sports. From Gorilla, well, it's a bunch of different things. Yeah. So why don't you talk about a little bit of this production? That's, and if Jesse was here, I let, or is Blake here? No. Blake's not here and Jesse's not here. No. Well, here you go, Mark. <laughs> I guess I have to be the one representing the company. <laughs> it's your time to shine. So tell us about what you guys are doing and what, what's going on here. So Gorilla Capturing is a boutique video production agency. We do a whole bunch of stuff ranging anywhere from commercials company documentaries, real estate, aerial cinematography, you name it. Anything you want to come with us with a project, we'll do it. Yeah, and and it's a big leap, maybe. We'll see. Well, definitely, it's already happened because of of Jesse and JJ into hockey specifically, but into sports. And that's something, another direction that you guys are going in, right? Yeah, so we also, (coughs) Gorilla Capturing, that's what we started with. The Gorilla Capturing was founded by Blake in 2008. Girl Sports is relatively new, but we stormed the market and we're trying to provide high quality broadcast footage material to the digital world. So I've been doing a lot of um, Avalanche coverage. I think it's been 23 games that I've filmed. Unbelievable. How many of the road trips have you gone on? Two. You've only gone on two? Yep. (laughs) Um, Mark, it's hard to tell. But there's a little bit of an accent. It's not much. But Mark's from Russia. Is that right? What yep. part of Russia are you from? Originally from Moscow. Moved uh, abroad uh, 11 years ago. Seven years in Colorado. Plan to stay here as long as I can. So for Avalanche fans, if you want, hey, here's a great tidbit for Avalanche fans out there. Mark, by a mile, has the best relationship with Val Nachushkin <laughs> and uh, Yakov Trenin, maybe sort of so-so, um, Prozvatov, and I don't know where you are with Georgi. Are you pretty friendly with Georgi yeah. too? So maybe you could just speak on that just a oh, little wait. bit about um, – I, I think it's good that you're in there for those guys because I think they don't get to talk to a lot of media uh, who can speak um, their language. What, what's been your impression – of just what it means to those guys, at least for a moment, they can have a conversation in Russian. It means a lot to them because I understand if I was a professional hockey player from Russia and there's no Russian media to talk to, at some point you just really want to talk to someone in your native tongue, even if it's not about hockey. And when I started doing girl sports, I didn't know anything about hockey. I've never been to, no, I'm lying. I've been to an IIHF game. Right. That's <laughs> the only one. And then, it wasn't a big deal for you. Not a big deal part no, of your life. 
Yeah. And uh, ever since I started doing Gorilla Sports, I realized that there's so much you can talk to those guys about. And they all want to talk about the basic stuff, like how your day is going. Like, what are you doing? And it's like, it's usually small talk for them because I was going to overload them with yeah. more questions yeah. and kind of be kind of like a safe area for them to just talk to me about rather than like, okay. Culturally, I want to... what's it like culturally for Russian athletes here in America overall? What do you think? How do you think? How do you think it is for Russian athletes in America? I mean, obviously, any Russian player wants to play for NHL. Yeah, and we see a lot of them playing for various teams around the country and in Canada. So I feel like it's their goal to get here. It's kind of like a dream. I mean, the concept of American dream still exists outside of U.S. But it does seem to me, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But for the Finnish or Swedish guys, never mind the Canadians, it still feels like they're relatively close to home. It does feel in Russia, it is a little different. Like it's much further away, culturally, uh, geographically, perhaps with their families. And I, I know Sweden and Russia, uh, Sweden and Finland are, uh, and, and that could be, you know, um, Czech or Slovenia or, or whatever. But it does feel like Russia's different. I, am I right about that? Or could I be reading that a little bit wrong? I mean, if you think about it, both Finland and Sweden and the European Union, which is vastly different from what Russia is right, like. And even right. though they're close, it's still not the same. Right, right. So that's why I feel like, at least in Russia, there was a point in time where a lot of people wanted to move to the U.S. Yeah. Because they thought that's where everything is. And I mean, I'm here because of the film industry world. Yeah. So It's bigger in America than Russia. Oh, yeah. All I right, mean, well, LA. I, I, I want to ask one, one question as it relates to players being able to communicate because I remember going back to when everything was shut down with COVID in the bubble, and there was pictures of Boban and Joker and Luca and all these guys that are all from these different Slavic countries that all used to be part of USSR, but they all have their own language, or is it all just their own? variations of Russian because you see Luca who's from Slovenia and Nikola Jokic is from Serbia and I get those are right near each other they talk like you know there doesn't seem I, I'm not close enough to know if there's a translation issue but is it similar are they all kind of just speaking Russian with their own different I guess dialect I mean you're thinking about a Georgiev well, let's take him as an example he is from Bulgaria but I speak Russian to him so back in the day a lot of countries around Soviet Union so it's beneficial to learn Russian because it's so close to Soviet Union. Now it's getting less and less. But back in the day, a lot of people know Russian. And Georgi probably realized that he is close to Russia. So I don't know his career. And he probably was involved in um, KHL, maybe. Yeah. So that's why he had to learn Russian. Yeah. yeah. But you'll find it more common in older generations the younger ones usually will not learn well, so what's school. it say that those guys can communicate well enough even though they grew up in these different countries that are near each other because i imagine someone from honduras can talk to someone from mexico you know it's interesting though with, with speak spanish with the ads now so let's go through it and kovalenko's here too who's with the eagles but so you and prozatov is with the eagles and then you've got trenin okay. Georgiev. Oh. I saw you swinging it. Who else? Um, obviously, Val. Yeah. And yeah, so oh, that's quite a few guys. Okay. That's crazy. Okay. And I find right. it ironic that they put um, Chishkin and Trenton next to each other, and they are from Chilevins. It's crazy. That's wild. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Appreciate well, it. Pleasure um, talking to you. Uh, if people want to reach out to Gorilla, best way to do it? Uh, best way to reach out would be uh, we're on every single platform, gorillacaptrain.com. Or info at gorillacapturing.com. Okay. I look forward to you. working with all of you. <laughs> well, he's running, he's running the show back there. And subscribe to Gorilla Sports because their hockey coverage is uh the hockey coverage is, is top second notch to notch and, and yeah, it's great. And like you mentioned, right, their, Nate, their sports uh, is growing. Wilson, what's going on out there? What's going on in the great uh great wild uh avid caddy land out there? What's it's happening? going on? What, what is what is happening? Man, people Did you see are... my wife? No. She's right here. Do you guys? Oh, hi there. Wow. Got, oh, we're giving, giving you. We're giving Nate. You were here, and then you left, and now you're back. Well, yeah, I was. I was, and now I'm back. Good, All right. good to see you. Good to see you too. Yeah. How's it going there, honey? We're on. We're on. <laughs> uh, there you go. Just handing Nate curious envelopes, and uh, you know. There, what's you got something to report? He's he's coming over here with a hustle. Well, we know. Wait, wait, he wait, gave wait, us a preliminary. Was, 
practice drive. You're, you're running over here. What's yeah, going on? Yeah, you know, I'm just over here being patient, you know, waiting my turn. Oh, all right. I think I think the number one is 302. The second is actually one of my, oh, all one right. of my patients and friends. He's 282, so he's talking shit to me, so I got to go whoop his ass real quick. <laughs> Come on, I like this one. 250 bucks, PGA. Yeah, that'd be nice. PGA gift card. You got a, you got a yeah. ticket? No. That's a good one. You know what's funny? Like when you're one off, you're like, oh, it's almost me, but it's but not everyone, almost you. And everyone in it's here just a is, ticket. It's a it's separate just a ticket. ticket. It's, it's completely it's, it's random. It's not like a, like a. No, there's no. You have, everyone in here is close. All of them start 1 6 0. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> by the way, can I do a humble brag right now? Yeah. Ian Eagle, who's doing play by play, he and I work together in college radio. Wow. Birdman. He's one of the best. Yep. So the best we were, guys and Tariko as well with you, right? Tariko is a couple years older than us. Okay. He he was, yeah, he was a senior oh, when I was like a freshman. Um, but Mike Tariko, here's a story for I'm you. Gonna win At this. Syracuse, he was the main anchor on the CBS affiliate while he was a senior in college. Wow. So full time, full time TV while he was still a student. Why isn't his name pronounced Ian? No, no it's Ian. Ian. It's, it has always been that. Ian. He, Ian? That is not made up. He's been Ian Eagle. Since we were, we're the same exact age. Yeah, that's me. Did you win? You won. What did you win? Rockies tickets. I thought for sure he I was won winning. Rockies tickets. I thought for sure I was winning Rockies tickets. Did he really win Rockies tickets? Yeah. He goes, yeah, that's me. I'm three in front of him. I'm 049. And 059 and 045 have won. Uh, he's re giving him. Are you keeping him or re giving him away? Are you keeping him, Nate? Yeah, I'm going. All right. You won Rockies tickets. I'm gonna take my son. Hey, so because you, your little boy is about the same age as my, he's four. four. Yeah. Do day games with with three, four, five year olds? Yeah. Great. Oh, you just go, get him some French fries, and some chicken, French fries, and, and you go to a little playground. Oh, they you got go a playground. The yeah, out in left field. Sick. But you're only out there for you don't want to be there too long. But yeah. were you a baseball player? No. No, 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 no. I can't play baseball. I can't throw. Really? Yeah, no, I can't. Throw. So you can't <laughs> swim and you can't throw. Nope, sure can't. That's pretty remarkable how good a baseball player your son was. Yeah, yeah, he could throw the hell out of the ball. What what level? How high did your son go in baseball? He just played high school. He didn't play. What high school? What high school he played? Well, for? Back in my hometown. Okay. Back in my hometown okay. In yeah. Yeah, baseball's um, baseball yeah. and football are great companion sports. Yeah. Um, I was the only kid on my high school baseball team that played soccer. Everybody else played football. So like, I was a big nerd in the fall but then we were all buddies again you know for like the rest of the year because we would play spring ball and summer ball so we, we I knew I spent more soccer. time with my football buddies who played baseball than i would with my soccer guys i would only see my soccer guys in the fall but it was a great combo sport um in america though you got to be rich to play baseball unfortunately really in, in america yeah really? because club ball uh, club, club ball, ball travel yeah have you been through all that uh did that the yeah. handful well, of kids there's probably a handful of kids walking around that are the quarterback or one of the best football players one of the best basketball players and also can hit the shit out of the ball and really good i bet but, they, i i i don't know how you do it in america to compete with the same kids that get the private training private coaching well, won't the cream rise eventually you know when you get to college if you're better you're better yeah but i'm just saying uh, unless you get that sort of training in baseball in america now it's different in different countries, and yeah. and you know because there's just more. They don't access. have high school sports in different countries, do they? They don't. But what they do, it's kind of a sick system. They'll take kids in the Dominican and they'll put them in a baseball academy like 13, at a very 14, young 14, age, but 12. they just spit them out with no education. Yeah. So they'll. I mean, it's actually kind of brutal. So there's better access for kids of all economic um, stratospheres. However, they don't give a shit about their education at all. Can I real quickly? Taylor made has a bunch of hats that they donated yeah. as a giveaway, and the guys here just announced it. Well, that's why everybody Don't was yeah. the mass exodus. Raw. What? what? We're so, running out of hats. Go get them. Is, everybody was here just for a hat. Yeah, one for me too, We're Brandon. Raw. <laughs> <They're> raw. <laughs> <laughs> no, Brandon. You guys are too funny. Yeah. They got plenty of hats. I know. I want one though. Raw, love it. One per person. Yeah, baby, I like it raw. Yeah, baby, I like it raw. Uh, the second half has. You know who uh, that is that I was just singing? The, the musical artist. Say it again. Yeah, baby, I like it raw. You don't know it. 
Old dirty bastard, man. ODB from the Wu-Tang Clan. R.I.P. Yeah. Wu-Tang Clan was here a couple of months ago. Your, oh, your... They went to Boulder. They were at a they were at a Buffs game. Did you go to? Oh, oh that's I didn't right. Show, but the thing with Wu Tang Clan is because there's so many of them, you're never sure who's going to be performing that yeah, night. Yeah. So you're like, well, is the RZA here? Or yeah. Your is Method Man with your the... hip hop knowledge is so extensive. What? Oh. Larry L. Hey, are you Larry L? Is... I don't think David's Larry L. That's for, his, for Larry uh, L. That's his code name. I want to hear your hip hop question to Nate. Oh, yeah. your hip hop knowledge is so extensive. But where where is your like specialty? Like I know your hip hop knowledge is kind of crazy. Well, but, I like, would say what it's, are you? It's it's when I was falling in love with the music, and it was in the '90s. So my hip hop knowledge is specifically probably '90s, early 2000s. To me, the the new hip hop doesn't you know doesn't it doesn't resonate it doesn't hit me yeah. maybe because I'm 44 years old. Do you like Juice World? I don't like Juice World. My, my son is into that like emo hip hop. Like you can't. Yeah, I'm not super popular. I'm not. Why? Why not? I'm not into the rappers talking about their feelings and shit. Really? No. I'm into the guys who are just all about the craft and, and being. So like, you wouldn't like like X X Tacion? You wouldn't? No, no. I, that's very. But sad. I missed it. But those were Both those, those, guys those were he was for the kids. Like okay. Was, are you into Triple X Tacion? Um, he, my son got me into it. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's tragic. He was shot to death. No, I know. World he was oh, robbed. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, took, mean, I took my 17-year-old a couple years ago when he was 14 in Chicago to the Juice World mural. Here's, oh, here's really? what I see. When I listen to that stuff and I know my kid's into it, I feel sad. Like, because these guys are obviously talented artists, no doubt about it. But the pain that they're going through is, is kind of crazy. And I'm just worried about young people in general. Like, how much pain are you really going I think through? People have always been in pain. It's the way we process it now that has changed. You know, pharmaceuticals didn't used to be a big part of everyone's life. And now, and the internet didn't used to be a big part of people's life. Yeah. And now people, look, you know, reach into the internet for more pain, for more people like them who they can yeah. connect with. And maybe that's good in moments, but in the long run, is that good for your health? I don't think it is. Sometimes when I listen to music, I, I admit I, I find it beautiful and touching, but it's it's sad at the same time. Oh, man. So... All and right. I know my son's really into it, and I wonder, well, are you okay? You know, if you're identifying with this, if young people are identifying with this music so much, yeah. like, are you okay? Well, this is a lot different than 90s hip-hop. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, there's different. also such a big element of 90s, early 2000s hip-hop that really was just about girls, cars, and money. And I'm not saying that was your favorite Not stuff, in the 90s, it wasn't. I mean, you're talking about I P. Thought, Diddy. Yeah. But yeah that, that's P. it. P. Diddy, Biggie. I thought the I mean, 90s hip-hop was Biggie, Tupac, Biggie wasn't some really talking about some of, money Some of much. it was about... No, it wasn't. I think right. everybody had one of those. Jay-Z had... No. The, the rappers I was listening to weren't I, talking about... Yeah, if you're listening to Tribe and you're listening to... I was listening, well, who are you into? Who are you right, into? I was listening to I was listening to Wu Tang. Those guys don't talk yeah. about that. I was listening to Outkast. They didn't talk no. about that. I mean, you know, they'd be like rolling down the street, smoking Indo, sipping on gin and juice, or rolling in my six four, which is a type of car. But yeah. it wasn't about look how much money I have because they didn't have a lot of money. You know what I mean? And it was more about telling the real stories of what it's like sure. for them, not what they want to get and what they the the, the bitches that they got. They didn't talk about it like that. You know, Wu Tang didn't talk about that. Outcast, Bone Thugs and Harmony, who I love. Uh, Snoop Dogg didn't really talk. He talked about smoking weed. Um, the, the the Bay Area rappers I like didn't talk about that. Tupac didn't really talk about money. No, they didn't a talk about money. That were more. Yeah, I'm saying that were just poppy, right? Like California Love poppy. is gonna have. No, but I'm trying to think like the context of the the lyrics. Speaking of Bone Thugs, obviously California Love was like about loving the state you're yeah. from. You're probably right. I have to go through lyrics. To Listen, I got you, uh, Brandon. You're you not going to get you me did. here. No, uh, Bone no, Thugs, I, I Bone, Broncos at Raiders, final game of the year. Bone Thugs was a halftime entertainment. So, they're not. They're not as good live as they are on the. Well, scene, and they were. A, they do so many player down. So who was oh, your? Were. Who well, like? That's dead. it. You, your guys. That's who you. It's most. hard for me to say like one, but yeah. When Eminem came around, I, I really identified with Eminem a lot. He did uh, not talk about. You know, money. we're both white, but I. But that's not why. I mean, I just loved his music. Um. And, the, and the, the rappers I was just mentioning, I love Nas. I love the East Coast rap. Lost Boys, you probably never heard of Lost Boys. Goody no. Mob, who's from Atlanta, but so was Outkast. Those guys. Um, Mob Deep, who you probably never heard of before. No. Goody uh, Mob, uh, what's his name for Goody Mob, though? But you know what? I'll tell you this. Hello. I am a big music fan. You know that. And I'm definitely open to whatever else is going on. Like, I, I try to stay as open as I can to whatever's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I do take some element of pride. So I, I'm always curious, like, what, what else is out there? 
yeah. and what else going on. I and a- I, I'm, I'm curious about things that I missed. I'll go back and listen to something or dig into something if I'm well, not really when's the last time you heard new music that you really liked, that you listened to over and over again? Um, hold on. Have you heard Beyonce's new country album? I have, yeah, I have it's not. It's out, isn't it? No, it's you out. Know who, is it good? Um, it's fine. Uh, look, Beyonce is obviously phenomenal. It's basically the music has changed behind her, and so there's a more country sensibility. She covers Jolene, and that sounds amazing. But her first hit, Texas Hold'em, it, it sounds like Beyonce with you know country melody underneath. Uh, it's, it's a good song. The brother sister, I'm fading on her name. The White Stripes? No, no. Oh, no, no. Uh, Billie Eilish. I uh, Billie Eilish. To oh. me is, you like Billie Eilish? I think it's you pretty- listen to Billie Eilish by yourself. I have. I have doesn't mean I do. Well, I remember you listening to pop music because it's happening to me now when your kids were in elementary school. If you can get a pass, like I understand where music helped them learn this, the stuff they learn in preschool and early elementary school. My kids love Taylor Swift. We listen to either, you know, hits radio. I I just haven't been able to connect with no, but I'm saying I remember you listening to that when they were kids. Yeah. Because your boys were eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. My kids at three and five. My my daughter's very a very big girly girl with princess this only wants to listen to girl songs so I made her a whole playlist of just girl songs that she likes but it's got no I I, I think you just got to be on it and I think you just got to be open to whatever you know so it's it's hard for me to put my finger on it but I, like I, me I'm I'm pretty open to like Coco Melon Paw yeah. Patrol things yeah. like that but if you can start playing just more poppy poppy songs will connect with kids no I play my stuff for my son a little bit. And when we're driving around in my in my truck, I play radio stations that I like, and he likes some of it, and some of it he doesn't. But I don't play like little kitty music for him. I play no like need. you know, yeah, exactly. No I'm not going to. You know, no. He'll he'll watch his cartoons, and obviously there's music attached to the cartoons yeah. that he that he sings and stuff like that. But, well, uh, are you? What instrument are you going to get your kid going on? Four, you're close. Are you, are piano? Yeah, oh, yeah. piano. Oh yeah. Yep. I didn't. Uh, all right, at four. Yep. You can piano, learn rhythm at four. Piano teaches you, you teach how to, per, per, percussion yeah. at four, no problem. Piano yeah. teaches you how to read music. Uh, is that the best I, I thing think about piano? I think piano is a core thing that you can go off of. For example, my son is an amazing singer. My older son, he never played piano, but he understands it that he can figure a song out just poking at it, and it was available. My younger son is a music producer, which is nuts, and and played viola. So he had a, a an idea of music instruction, and he like on GarageBand, and it's all hip hop. Yeah. And the stuff that he's produced hip hop wise, like he has a sense of rhythm and how chords work with each other. That and the technical abilities to do it, that literally just blow me away. Plus, in a rap sort of form, and he's more of the emo sort of stuff, and he'll do it himself, even though he will acknowledge he's not the greatest singer out there, but he'll still try to do it. He's done things on his own that have just blown me away. And I firmly believe it's because I didn't force music on either kid, but music was there in the house. It was like encouraged. Well, that's what I was going to say. Like, so where is the line between, you know, exposing a child to a bunch of things, seeing what he leans towards, and then giving him lessons and things? I think you got or, or do you put him in a piano at yeah. four, and then, and then he starts hating it because it's like, well, I would never, <laughs> if he starts hating it, I would stop. Yeah, immediately. Quick time out. David Bruton, if those were the ones that counted, yeah, not one was maybe no. two hundred. The second one was one forty nine. Oh. <laughs> so so much for that. Um, I would say he made you got to be careful with it. But I'm glad my parents did force me to take piano lessons. I quit when I was twelve. Yeah. Um, but when did you start? I started when I was seven. Okay. And because I took, well, actually, no, I'm sorry. I quit when I was fourteen. I'm sorry. I was actually much older. And and I stopped. I didn't touch it for two years. Didn't touch piano for two years. Then I fell for a girl, and Wrote I went right back to the piano. Was and, her name Amy? Yeah, it was. And and I picked up drums completely on my own, completely on my own. And that, because I, I was just sick of the piano at that point, but I wanted to play music, and I just learned drums on my own. But that's that's why I'm not that great at the drum. What was your first instrument that you learned? I never took lessons. Yeah, my brother was the musician in the family. He started playing guitar when he was in middle school. By high school, he was in a band. He's been in a rock band ever since. So he was always the the artist, the musician. I was always the athlete, right? So I was never, I was never, it's hard to devote yourself to both music and sports at the same time and become all in on both of them. You know what I mean? Or at least it was for me. But here's, here's, 
me and my buddies gravitated towards rap music and we would smoke a little smokey smokey and we and freestyle yeah freestyle you know, and, and 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 the rhythm and the beat and the music was important to us now we weren't taking formal training but we were drawn to music that we responded to right yeah. Yeah. and so that when i ended up in college with a buddy across the hall and and we started making <coughs> making rap songs and then like it went from there and then i you know so so that was a more of a natural path but sports were the number one thing for me and always were and 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 now that i'm done with sports i gotta you know fill the void and find something else yeah well i'll tell you i've been lucky enough to <laughs> perform a rap song it was a parody rap song but i did it at red rocks and it was unbelievable um and we we gotta we gotta play we really do got to put yeah. some sort of band together. We could do this with microphones and, t and cameras. And we could. You could just play drums and I could do the rest. Oh, oh, I would insist on everything else. Yeah. Trust me. I, I wouldn't want but any other go, role. Do you go drums to piano? Because I've seen you play piano. Uh, yeah, but I can't can sing. Can you have some keys right here, too? Yeah, where you can, can just you turn. Sure. You can, like, hold a beat, uh, hold, can you hold a, ba a beat? And, and play, play piano at the same time. I have not tried that. But that you never would be, should. It could be impressive. That would be so impressive. a buddy of mine who we used to jam with. He'd have a pad in front of him. Yeah. That oh, has, yeah. That has musical sounds on it. Yeah. Yeah. So you can be playing drums no, and like a and a bass line at the same time. Here's here's what I should stop doing, is watching musicians on YouTube because it doesn't inspire me. It depresses the shit out of yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> because you see how good they are, how innovative, and how amazing they yeah. are, and you just realize, wow. I can't do any of this. Um, but then again, you know, it's a hobby. It's a fun hobby, and I'll keep going. I'm going to get an electric set now that I've got a new place. Yeah. Are, is it? Um, <laughs> is your new place conducive to you having a music room? Yeah, well, yeah. I'll have a room where it's going to be podcasts, drums, everything. It's like a studio. Are you, you going to build it out? Like, are you going to do some customization to the shelving or do something? Uh, I will. It'll be it, anything I can imagine I'll be able to do. And we're going to have the piano just down in like a... Oh, no. I was just going to have my brother-in-law brother come in and help you build it. Oh, well, I could use help because I can't do anything well, manly. Well, I mean, you don't have to pay him. But. I can do zero manly. Um, but we started a podcast. We have we had a uh, we still have a piano in the house I grew up in, so we always had a piano around. I have a piano that we got at Goodwill that we just need to get tuned. I, so I think... To put the kids on it. Listen, I'm a little snob on this, too. Because I don't think a keyboard does the same as a piano. No, it doesn't. I think there's something about just being able to sit down and just like. Yes. Yeah. It was wild finding a Steinway at Goodwill, but I did. It was like 300 bucks. You got a Steinway? No, oh, you're joking. Pianos, by the way, it's one of the few things in life you will buy that actually goes up. It yeah. appreciates. Pianos appreciate not. That and cars. Yeah, cars. Exactly. The minute you drive it off the hey, lot, it goes breaking up. Down. They're breaking down the back of the table. We, we put enough uh, seltzer. I had to go vodka. get a second one. They ran out over there. They ran the out. Bucket. So I'm like, are there any samples up? Like, yeah, you're gonna forget out of the kit. I'm like, no, I have this couple of ice. I'm well, this has been a hell of a, a thing here, man. We've vodka. had a huge turnout. It feels like bucket. You could easily like have some play on words with, you know, fuck it. We're doing pretty good with people hanging in here for this for the most part. People yeah, have been here for a couple hours. Not the best game. Uh the game itself, UConn. See, this is but this is where I was ripping on NBA versus college basketball. This, I mean, it's forty-nine to thirty-eight, almost halfway through the. Purdue's missed a couple of putbacks. They missed a little jump hook. They're missing. It's they're it's missing just, easy shots. Right. They just. I'll tell you this right now. The women's game was more exciting than, than this by a mile so far. And like you look at this game right now, and you're like, how will Purdue ever <laughs> come back? Here comes a dejected David What's wrong? Bruton. Oh, oh, those are just practice shots. Yeah, or that was real. No practice. All Both practice. practice. I saw you go. Did you go 202 on this one and then 149? I went 242 I saw... and then 180 something. And then you want to step there, up there, BK, and see how you do? Look like a four. No, I'm on the list. All right. Well, we'll see how you do. Yeah, they weren't great. They weren't great. I'll tell you that right now. They weren't great. But well, you Brandon, Brandon played in the live. Uh, he did. He run. played in the live tournament. Yeah, so yeah. he's, he's going to be good. Yeah, he's been in a couple pro am. I've yeah. been able to play a lot of golf. Thanks to Sean Payton, I was able to play a lot of golf in the fall because they don't do anything on Monday. Drew. Hey, Tuesdays. I played in the uh, Dino Putt Putt, so there's a putting contest. Yeah. You know, right. uh, I think I'm going to be good on that. Yeah, me too. Um, but I don't go to the range as much as I'd like because you need that to go with playing more often than I've ever played in recent all right, months. It's 51 38. Do you think Purdue has a shot? To cover in, in ten minutes to actually it come doesn't back in this look game. like it. No, so they've scored thirty eight points and they're down by thirteen. Well, open three. I mean, you can kind of just do the math. Here. Yeah, and they've scored thirty eight points in like 
30 minutes of basketball almost. Like, right. Here's something, like a point that, a minute. here's something that makes me like the women's game a little more than the men's game at this point. Four quarters. Why are we still on two halves? Like, yeah. I just uh, two yeah. Halves. Here's what's stupid in college. I can fix college basketball. Um, it needs to go to quarters, not halves. The halves are dumb, and they need to play the same as NBA. Yeah, four 12-minute quarters. And have a 24-second shot clock. And uh, oh, there you go. I mean, that would help. Yeah. The end. Also, college should do the following. They should allow the kids to just enter the NBA. It's America, after all. If you can work, work, or follow the college baseball model, you can go right years. out of high school. But if you go to college, it's three years until you become eligible think, or you turn 21. I That's the baseball. You, I think with hoops, you can knock it down to two. I would keep it the same as baseball. You're you're three years out of college or you're 21. You know or, or, the G League. or you just go. You just go. If you're good enough to go, go. You know what would happen? You would just know more kids in college basketball. You would, because they would just be there longer. You would remember some of these kids. And if they were so good, do you know Peyton Watson of the Nuggets played at UCLA? Do you know how much point how many points he averaged his freshman year? How many? Three. Oh. He came in as one of the highest recruited because high school players, you're too. Just, McDonald's he just kid. couldn't go to the NBA. And then college, of course, there's some older kids who hang around in college. You're just not good enough. Then, but you're going to get better. That's why Cody Williams from CU, who can't start or stay on the court in crunch time. It, now, they, they are saying this is, might be the worst draft of all time projected. But he's projected to go number one, potentially. And he couldn't get on the court at the end of games for CU because Tad didn't trust him because he had all these juniors and seniors and fifth-year guys. So even though the kid's six, seven, six, eight, his brother plays for the Thunder. Kind Another of thing, thing about college basketball, it used to be the best players in the world before they were in the NBA, did play in college basketball. It's not even close now. Yeah. Best players in the world are, are in Europe or wherever. So, so do, do American high school players go overseas now? Some do. Yeah. Some do. G League. But, yeah. but basketball is just better worldwide, period. Why is that? They're smarter in how they're developing, and they don't put kids in a box. If you're a big kid, you're going to learn how to dribble. You're going to learn how to shoot. And so you're seeing – Bigger players well, that's now. be better. It wasn't always too. like that. That's now how they, the game has shifted. They don't play games. They practice all week and have two games a week. They don't go to an AAU tournament and play five games on Saturday and three on Sunday. Also, also the coaches in college, and this is why I'm just kind of down on college sports. They run these colleges like the coaches are the stars, like the coaches are making the plays. You know, it's still about the yeah. players. But they get in college, and all of a sudden, it's about the stupid coach. Yeah, it is. And a lot of college sports is like that, including college football, too. You know, and you don't see that. You have to be a little humble as a pro coach. You know the players are making more money than you, yeah. or the good ones are. You can't you can't treat the pro – I don't think – treat the pro players like you get, can treat college players, not the pros. I don't think you can. Can you? I'll ask the question. What was the amount of time? Not really. Not really. Like, there is – there's still a hierarchy, you know what I'm saying? Like you still have yellers as coaches there who, who will be little players. But for the most part, the environment I was in with Mike Shannon and that coaching staff, incredibly professional, uh, treated everybody with respect. Um, you know, there's grown men there. It's not kids. They're not kids there. They're men with families. Um, and and Mike Shannon is making more money than all of us. Hey Jesse, we'll get you on later. Get you on but Jesse. like you know, you, you, a lot of guys in the room are making more money than their position coach. Everyone is actually. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. All yeah. right. So who's the best coach you had, David? Who's the best coach you had? Oh, position head coach. What do you mean? It's a head coach. Fox. Better than Kubiak. I just connected with Fox more. I love Fox. Yeah. Foxy was my guy. Yeah. Why? Why did you like Fox so much? Uh, players coach. I was a Carolina Panther fan. As well, so okay. like when that Jake Delhomme and Ricky Mason right. Jr. and all that, like, like Fox just he had the defensive mindset and he, you could shoot the shit with him, like, yeah, like it didn't feel like there was a big power asymmetry there. Like, even as a young guy, I could still talk to you. That makes sense growing up in the middle of Ohio near the Browns, Bengals, and Steelers that you're a Panthers fan. Well, my dad was a truck driver, he brought uh, home a Panther. Carolina Panthers, and, and you like their colors, yep, yep. But there was, you know what's funny about, and I love Foxy. I love Fox. I do think you guys need a Kubiak to win the Super Bowl. I do. I think there was, because I think that season was so complicated that the Super Bowl 48 was a mess. It was. 
I mean, you're but, still mad about the moving hotels. But, but but in that same breath, defense wins championships. Like that was the number one defense. How many number one offenses have beat a number one defense in the Super Bowl? Right. You know, in all honesty, that year your offense was so good. Yeah. I mean, the offense was sick. Yeah. I just was like, well, they're going to score forty points. So no, absolutely. Not. And and Seattle ran two defenses: I cover know. one and cover three. That is it. <laughs> really? That is all they fucking ran, and they ran it to a T. That fucking game was like the most. That might have been the most depressing game I've ever been at. You guys are also a little short-handed. Didn't have Bond. Didn't have didn't, Chris. Didn't have Derek Wolf. Didn't have Wolf. Didn't have Dreesen. I mean, but in that same breath, the offense had everybody. They had everybody. Except Dreesen. The offense still had everybody. That's where we. Yeah. Where we Your made bread our money was buttered. The offense yeah. that year. I, you know, what? I I looked at the defense like, eh, Paris Lennon is a starter, no big deal. And it was like, oh, maybe that actually is a big deal. And then I was like, oh, maybe that's a big deal. And then all of a sudden, like, everything was a big I deal. I bet Paris Lennon's neck still looks the same as when he played. What? As when he played. Yeah. If you I'm, not, I'm, Paris not trying to, I'm not trying to dog on Paris. He's no, a nice enough guy. But my point is, like, it just wasn't the team of superstars yeah. that, well, that 50 was. You know, yeah. it's – and you were missing Vaughn. That sucked. I mean, you right. know. Yeah. Thank you, ladies. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. But, and Appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. you. That's, that's the thing that gets overlooked a lot, and it's a bummer that you and Omar Bolden didn't play in that game. But otherwise, your top 17 defensive players all played. Right, were available to play. Your starters from week one, Derek Wolf was a starter but was suspended for PDs or whatever. But all 11 starters, plus Shane Ray and Shaq Barrett, plus Todd Davis, plus Bradley Roby, technically. So you had your top 16 guys all available and playing in the Super Bowl from but week that, one. To, to me, that's not even on the defense, that Super Bowl. I, seriously. Yeah. I think it's the offense just couldn't do <clears> – they couldn't do anything. Especially well, it was a bad start. That was, you know, but it was only two points. It was a bad start, yeah. but it's it's two. Yeah. It's two. That's it. It yeah. sucks, but you're down yeah. two. Yeah, you don't think anything of it. It's like, oh, we got Peyton. We have this offense that yeah. scores 90 points a game type shit. Yeah. You, you say one on the defense, but Percy Harvin was, is a difficult match. It was just like, bad. Prime Percy and, Harvin then, was. and then everything was just wound up in 48, like everything about it. And then two years later, when I was, I went and covered the Panthers. And I'm like, oh, I recognize the Panthers. This was the Broncos two years ago. They were all wound up. Everything was tight. Cam Newton was like, I don't know what was going on with that dude. I mean, he was in such a weird mood the entire week. And I don't know. I don't know what was bugging him. And I was like, holy shit. And I would cover the Broncos. And it was chill. It was just at that Santa Clara hotel. Super chill. Yeah. You're in a fucking well, office park. They're but, right down the street from where, like, Nate used to live. But, yeah, I grew that's up crazy. Oh, but how big God. a deal was it that when you guys landed, y'all immediately, like, went out Sunday night. The whole team, right? There were buses, and y'all went up, got your party, and got all that. And then it was like, all right, now let's just chill and get ready for the game versus New York. The We, did, the, we did the same thing in New York, though. You did? Yeah, we didn't have a curfew. Didn't have a curfew. Then curfew, it got a little earlier, a little earlier, and then... We're at eleven o'clock, like a normal, like a normal deal. Did the switch in hotels? Was that as big a deal as DMAC thinks it is? The what now? Switch in hotels the night before the game. Yeah, that. I mean, that's clear. But at the end of the day, it's the Super Bowl. It doesn't fucking matter. Wake your ass up. I, I thought it was stupid. I just, I just thought it was like unnecessary. It was like practicing with the doors open so it's cold was unnecessary. Yeah. The Seahawks, <laughs> no, they did that. But the Seahawks just took the day off. They were just like, ah, oh, well, whatever, no big deal. Yeah. By the way, the hotel you guys at sucked. You you just go down the road, and the Seahawks were in a, like, a way better hotel. It was just more relaxing and more chill out. Period. Yeah. I have no idea. You were doing press on a boat that was out of a porn movie from the seventies. Yeah. Like because the hotel wasn't big enough to have a ballroom to have the guys just chill out. Yeah. And, yeah. No. It was it was all like it was all like a lot of like little shit that just seemed to add up. Add up. Foxy, I love him. He didn't realize how loud. He didn't realize how many Seahawks fans really were in New York. So I, I get it. Usually the Super Bowl is not as loud, not nearly as loud as a, like a yeah. championship game. But that Super Bowl was really fucking loud. The only other one that the was Seahawks fans that loud was the amount of Saints fans that made it to Miami. Okay, well it 09. happens. But, right, but that's also that proximity made a little more sense. But like, call Seattle a fucking like first play of the game. Call a goddamn fucking running play. Like, you know, hand the ball off. Just get into rhythm. 
But, of course, the first play of Super Bowl 50 was a yeah. pass to Owen Daniels. That's so, I mean, you know. Yeah. But I think that was just to get Peyton, like, like let's go. Yeah. If you really look at Super Bowl 50, it was a very conservative offense. And Peyton threw two interceptions. Your wife's taking a swing uh, on the simulator. Demon. My wife? She's how's a good her golfer. Go- how's her golf? She's a golfer? Yeah, good swing there. Yeah, that was a practice swing. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how you she's guys are do uh, living in, in Lone Tree. I mean, there's a lot of golf. A lot of golf here. around. Yeah. Going to some golf clubs. I'm going to be the most un Douglas County person to live in Douglas County of all time. Uh, I think, so. I, I think I might take that. I moved into my neighborhood and all. The are you Hanukkah in? Stuff, are you in Douglas County? All the Hanukkah Burrow? stuff was on sale December 1st, and Hanukkah was like December 30th that year. I'm like, I'm definitely the only Jewish person in this neighborhood. Well, you live around here, right? I live a little further west, southwest. 16 Littleton. points. I did the. I did the. Uh, the, the, I was the auctioneer for the gala that your kid goes to, to school at. Really? Yeah. A couple months, like a month ago or something. And you weren't there that night. Okay. Yeah, you weren't there, but your buddy's like, hey, Brandon Cristal's kids go to school here. He's supposed to be here tonight. <laughs> All right, the score. Let's watch the game a little bit. We've been barely – let's watch it a little bit. I'm it's, curious. It's a 14-point game. Seven and a half is the number you got to look at now in the over-under at 146. Uh, we I, want to I, thank I don't see our, a world unless Purdue's going to make a couple threes. All right, we will pay attention to the final nine minutes of the game. Uh-huh. Well, let me ask you guys this. In, in, in a, the modern era where we don't really have favorite college basketball players, do you have a favorite college basketball player from either your youth or over yeah, the last Yeah, Carmelo Anthony. Years? There you go. He won my school a national championship. I love Carmelo. I don't, get, I don't care how much shit he takes here. I'll always love Carmelo. Yeah. But, uh, you won a national championship for my school. That's it. it. Should he had 33 oh, yeah. and 15 in the championship game against Kansas. I was at that game. That sucked. You, I, well, I don't know how much you care about University of San Francisco. University of San Francisco? Yeah, Bill Russell, right? Bill Your Russell. favorite player? Yeah, Bill Russell. Was Bill Russell well, when I was favorite? a kid, it was, you know, Stanford and Cal were the local teams that people cared about. So Stanford, I don't know. Do you remember? I think it was Casey Jacobson. Yeah, Casey Jacobson. He's wow. on Pac-12 Network. Good memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. FS1. Uh, Mark Madsen. Mad yeah. Dog. Yep. Head Mad coach Dog. at Cal. Yep. What's that? Mad Dog's the head coach at Cal. Is he? Yeah. Just got an extension. Those are pretty good Cal players back in the nineties. Like, well, yeah, you had well, Sharif Abdul Rahim was like your age, but yeah, yeah. I guess a little easier older than me. Yeah, so he would have been like, he would have been in high school when he was at Cal. It is crazy to think the University of San Francisco, the Dons, yeah, won two national championships wow. with Bill Russell and Casey Jones, who would go on to, you know, be stars with the Celtics. Don't even have a team. Do they still have a team? They do yeah. have a team. Yeah. Steve Lavin coached him for a couple of years. University of San Francisco is an interesting place. It is, like, right in the middle of San Francisco. Yeah. Actually, it's kind of near the Presidio area, but but whatever. It's, like, yeah. it's it's tight. Yeah. Like, there's – it's hard to find. There is a campus, though. They do actually have a little bit of a campus. What about you, Dave? Growing up in Ohio, you got Kentucky down the road. You got Ohio State. Any of those kids, or any college basketball player ever resonate with you? Every, any like, a college basketball player that you liked ever. Because I'm trying to think how old you are and who would have been no, really I mean, good. Like, I mean, because LeBron skipped high school. Like, Wait, did you not I play basketball? Say, I would say, I would say UK, the UK. Yeah, just all those with guys. Toby with... Smith at that era. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Because my dad's a big UK fan. Yeah. UK basketball. Hey, look, I hate Ohio State. That's the one school that you I hate. hate. Ohio State. I hate Ohio State. I hate Ohio State. I hate it. Hate it. Why hate do you it, hate man. Ohio State? Just, I'm, I think it's probably just where I grew up. Yeah. And everybody's just hey, plenty of Ohio State. Man. Super obnoxious and. Well, it's funny because my wife grew up in central Pennsylvania, and she hates Penn State because everybody loves Penn State because yeah. it was just so much Penn yeah. State. So you talk to her, she, her sister went to Penn State. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up in Dallas with college basketball near us, but nothing prominent. But Bobby Hurley, Wait, so Bobby Hurley in 92, those hold on. Duke teams were Were you night. recruited by Ohio State? I was, so I'm also bitter about that shit too. I wouldn't have gone, but <laughs> – but I had like this great junior day. You know, I jumped well. I ran faster 40 than the other safety they offered. I had a, two picks during their seven on seven. No love. Damn. No bit wow. of attention. When did you graduate nice. high school? Wow. When did you graduate high school? Oh, five. So you're two Trestle. years ahead of LeBron? Behind LeBron? Behind LeBron. So what offers did you have? What, what were your top? I'm sure you had a million. But what were your top offers? Michigan, Notre Dame, Wisconsin. Those would probably be my And top nothing three. from Ohio State. Nothing from Ohio State. Oh, that's a little fucked up. Well, I also actually saw Jim Trestle at a junior camp last year when I took my oldest uh, up there in Youngstown, and he was like, Bruton? He's like, I fucked I told, up. I told my DB coach he fucked up there. Yeah, okay. yeah literally. Like, <laughs> okay. like, kid from Minesburg, right? I was like, how the hell do you know? So now I respect Jim, but I still fucking hate Ohio State. So. <laughs> that's funny. All right, we got a commercial uh, timeout here. Um, 
some people still employ but a lot well, of people the are long drive around. contest people is never hanging, ending man. yeah it's a long one i still have as long the sign up to the back page like to another page my guy from andon from journey spice company is wrapping things up he had some tasty treats and we had some tasty uh Appetizers. Tasty appies, bro. Yeah. yeah. Some poo-poos. And uh, I hope everybody's having a good time. Um, that was kind of more or less the way I thought it would kind of go. Yeah. I, I thought the basketball game would be a little like, yeah, Sorry. whatever. Yeah. 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 I bet this is going to be a very low rating for this game. Yeah, on TBS, it's a boring game. On yeah. TBS doesn't help. Great. Yeah. These guys are not very dynamic. You know, you know what's funny about TBS? The very first, because they did that new partnership, when Carolina played Villanova in the first ever overtime game, and Chris Jenkins banks in a three to win the game. That was on TBS. So you thought the ratings would have been through the roof, and it wasn't yeah. because yeah. it was on TBS and not CBS that year. Like, they I were mean, good for TBS. You know what's yeah. funny? This is, even though the women's game wasn't all that close, it's a 16-point lead for UConn. This is, like, borderline, like, boring. Yeah. Like, there's, yeah. you know, and I because I don't know how in the world Purdue comes back because nobody can shoot. Yeah. Nobody you know, shoot. Without the ability to hit three point. Oh, so you're going to – it's like this high school press. Full court press. Well, see, in the pros, you can't get away with this, and they're not really getting away with it <laughs> here either. Oh. When, well, but the, the, there you go. In the pros, that's a dunk. In yeah. the pros, that's and, – and they break that press easy. And so in the pros, you really can't press. You really can't. You can't double team. You can't press because you're going to get beaten. And then the, the seven-foot-four giant. Whoa. <laughs> oh, all right. Oh. That championship game. I mean, I guess – I guess if UConn just keeps missing shots and you throw it to the giant underneath, you got a shot. That Villanova Carolina game drew seventeen point eight million, and they had it. They had it playing on TBS, TNT, and True TV all at the same time. Okay, so they had it, but still, yeah, it was all on cable, wasn't on CBS. I mean, you know, I think the women's game might be might not drop eighteen and change. That's more than any NBA Finals game last year. More so, than so any both, baseball game. Both team strategies right now. Is Purdue's strategy is to throw it to the seven foot four guy, yeah. and UConn's is to throw it to the seven foot two guy. Yeah. <laughs> but UConn's gonna take no, but but um, my point is, nobody has a shot of hitting an outside shot, yeah. Like, you just won't. Who's there that? There really guy? are no dynamic perimeter players, well, and, right. and you kind of need to take any threes. Caitlin right. Clark would, I mean, she would never get a shot off against uh, the men, yeah. The Iowa she, girls would whoop these guys, right? They, here. they would not, no. they would lose by. A thousand I, points. I'll say this about I've said this about Caitlin Clark, and I don't, I'm not being hyperbolic. I think she's the second best shooter on the planet right now, fine steps, because of her ability to shoot, oh to God, shoot set, yes. just to shoot set and move. Brandon, that's so. I'm wrong. telling you, you got to go. You got to go to an NBA practice and watch Michael Porter Jr. I, shoot fine, uncontested, I, right? But or that's, Michael that's, Porter Jr. does not shoot off the dribble the way Caitlin Clark does. Yes, he, he does. He doesn't. He's way I've watched, better. I've watched every you game he played, dude. You think he's way better? Unguarded, unguarded, because you're talking about unguarded. I'm talking about moving with the ball, getting your. I'm not. But you're talking unguarded. Yeah, everybody unguarded. Caitlin Clark. No fucking way. You got to go to a couple of Nuggets practices. I was in fucking Nuggets practice today. Oh, okay. And the hockey practice. They put up 500 shots. How many threes did they hit? I didn't say threes. I'm talking about the whole fucking court, dude. We're arguing about the most ridiculous things. But Michael Porter Jr. does not take the ball, make three moves, and get a good shot up. He's awesome. Going to the rack, he's really good shooting. I'm a three. not. I forget about his him. feet set. You're not respecting how good these NBA guys really are, dude. dude you're not respecting how good Caitlin Clark. You're not, you're not respecting her. You gotta respect to Wood. Larry Watch. Man. No, next year when she's right, still I'm gonna have a calm have argument some... here. These NBA guys blow me away how good they are. It's mind. Blo- All right. How about I? How about this? Guys who are professional athletes are so good at what they do. It's hard to comprehend how much better they are than people on lower levels. Is that fair to say at yeah. any pro sport? Of course. Yeah. yeah. Basketball is kind of the – But Caitlin the best Clark player. is not – that's not an apt comparison because she's a professional caliber player, right? She is, and she'd be unbelievable in any shooting contest, the end, period. But to compare Caitlin Clark to somebody in the NBA who's a shooter, to me is just – I get it. We all love Caitlin Clark. I mean, then Sabrina – yeah. Almost beat. Wait, almost seven, beat seven, nine, again, that was just fucking threes. I'm talking about 20 spots on the court where you're not just catching and shooting. You're moving to get a shot off, which is something that's hard to do. Some guys are really good at it, but they can't knock down set you know, shots. The, the funny part about this conversation is that anybody can sort of just shoot, kind of, if you practice it enough, an unguarded shot. You know, but can you get a shot off? And that's. 
anybody can go out to the park, guys, and catch a pass, theoretically, or maybe throw a ball. Quarterbacks, right? No. <laughs> but but can you do it when right. there's when pressure the on rush, you, right. when you're processing information, when, when it really matters? Or if it's just a skills competition, it's kind of like, well, yeah. all right. You can find like an 80-year-old guy who's mastered the free throw, yeah. right? But yeah. can you... <laughs> Can you earn a free throw? Can you make a shot that you can follow that Zach you would earn a free can shoot throw? free throws just bricked one. So this is getting out of hand. There's a difference between trick shots and you know being able to play a sport. I'm sure you guys do plenty of fast guys or in the gym, plenty of strong guys who couldn't play football. Yeah. Oh, of course. Sure. Right? Of course. For sure. So or fast so, guys that can't so you're catch shitting a football. on Kaylin Clark. You think she sucks? I'm not no, 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 no. Hey, but, but, hey yeah. I saw an interview with Serena. I heard all that too. Dude, yeah. I heard it all too. Yeah, nice, nice argument. Yeah. I heard I saw an interview with Serena Williams, and she said somebody asked her if she could beat the 700th man, ranked man in the world. Serena Williams said no, he would beat me six love, six love. Shooting is different though. You're not playing against each other. You're shooting at a it's at a, a skill. Right. Right. I'm right. saying that she is the second most skilled shooter being able to make as many different types of shots and i'm telling you i think there's 40 guys in the nba who could shoot better than her I, i'm not talking At about least. shooting i'm not talking about corner three three point i'm talking about 20 spots i don't care what you're talking about they're gonna hey we're gonna see five it. guys on the we're gonna see are better it next year at the all-star game because they're not gonna kick sabrina out they're gonna do three and three so we're gonna see steph curry caitlin clark sabrina yeah, they'll do it, they'll do it yeah. it's gonna be three and three and it's gonna be not fucking so this argument will be three. settled next. It'll be settled year, next. Year. I, I just, I just, in San Francisco. Yeah. I just think it's a useless oh. argument because it's belittling. I, I think it puts her like, why have that conversation? Well, right. It's like long drive contest doesn't mean you're going to go win a fucking golf. Well, you okay. are because you played at a live event. We'll find out. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, guys. I hate to end this. I gotta go. go. You gotta go. I do. Yeah. My wife is uh, not feeling great. She's pregnant, and she's just kind of. Oh, know. congrats! Yeah, man. Well, we're having a little girl. Uh, oh, this summer, awesome. So, yeah. uh, tomorrow morning, yeah. 9 a.m. Um, myself, Nate, and Chad. Yeah. We'll be back with Chuck with Payne talking about the Dave. We do it every day. I know yeah, you're not interested, but we do it every day. Yeah. You do it every day. Yeah. Every yeah. interested yeah. in his own. I mean, won't come on yours. This, yeah. this, everything we're doing right now started basically because me, Nate, and Chad started doing a podcast four months ago. Yeah. And, okay. um, yeah. It's, you're always welcome to join us, man. Appreciate it, man. And, good hanging with you. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. I'll see you around. Always good. All right, guy, Nate Jackson. All right, Nate. See you, bro. Nate Jackson, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Uh, it was a mess. How long are you hanging around for, Brute? Well, I was going to swing, but I don't know if I'm going to swing. Because it's just backed up? Uh, yeah, it's so backed up. All right. And the game's not exciting anymore. Not well, you exciting. Can, you well, is Jesse going to come over here? We're not going to keep you here, but I love talking to you. Yeah, to bring, to bring my patient in if you you want to go check it out? Let's see. All right, let's get our guy, Jesse. I don't think they left. I ha- you know what? We'll let you go. I'll just let you go. Well, have you, even, have you done your contest yet? He still has to compete. We'll do more stuff, man, for sure. We'll get going. We're going to talk some hockey. I do. I know. <laughs> I can help you there. Jesse, come on in. Yeah, I was, I was at. Uh, Doesn't swim, can't throw. I was at hockey. I, I went, I went basketball to optional skate with your guy Grizz today. There you go. I asked, a, <laughs> I asked a few questions of everybody. Go, you were, you were in skate. You were in hockey today. Yeah, dude. I talked to bed darts. What were you lost? How'd you get there? Went down the hallway. Well, it was a big day today. It was an unusual day at Ball Arena because yeah. the Avalanche and Nuggets were practicing at the exact same not, time. Not really. Because of that meeting, the Avs didn't even hit the ice then except it, Miko. That's fine. Oh. But it was scheduled. Yes, scheduled at the same time. The Nuggets were scheduled at 11.40. The Avs were scheduled at noon. noon. But yeah, there was a bunch of us just sitting in the stands at noon waiting for about 30 you minutes. You want to walk me through what was going on today? Uh, apparently a 30-minute-long meeting at, at, yeah, about 12, uh, just short of 12.30, we were made aware, like, ah, it's been pushed back. It's optional. A bunch of the guys started coming out from the locker room in their shoes, you know, just fascinating. Yeah. So I don't know. It was, uh, I had to go. I, I had, uh, you couldn't even, you didn't even stick around. No, I had, I had, uh, Rachel Toss actually coming down to the studio. We, we did sat down for an interview. So I'll be out on Wednesday. Right. Uh, awesome. but, but she's great. So I, I had to, I had to go, uh, I had to get back to the studio to meet her. I was hoping that they were going to be noon and get out there and get in the locker room and, and David be done. B, oh, there he is. David, David B. David B. We've got a Super Bowl champion, and they're just calling him David B. You're next. <laughs> the question is, Super Bowl because he wears his ring on his left hand, does he wear it over his golf glove <laughs> for this swing? Because he the brought his own. Weight. He brought his own clubs and his golf. Gloves. He was taking it seriously. Now, David Brune is a pro athlete who is an un. 
unbelievable shape. Which is why I was so blown away by some of the stuff you said earlier. Okay, this one it is straight. No, you actually missed the fair. Uh, distance on oh, the left, short. lower left, 242. Oh, that's pretty good. 261 on the carry. Dude, 261? Yeah. I think they're so I think what's 303 right 303? now. 303? Because somebody hit it 302. Let that go a little bit, too. Well, that's right down, little left. That's kind of down the middle. But not. So he's at 258 and then carried to 277. Wow. 277. All right. Well, he's good he's up there for sure. How many shots do you hit? Three that count. And he's been warming up for an hour. He said you take a couple warm ups. <laughs> oh, oh, he hit the oh, shit out of that. that hard. Oh, That's your best that one. one. What is that? What, 200. Two, oh, 252. 269. Oh, I thought he got it further. I know. It looked like it. All right. Anyways, um, that's David. Back to and, um, we're at Avid Caddy. Um, AvidCaddy.com for all the information. They have three bays, a driving range, two courses. You should hit some if you can. Ten minutes from my house. Best of all. Yeah. And I'm <laughs> I'm moving right here. I know. I didn't realize we were going to be such a... We have coffee together. And I'm about 18 minutes west. There you go. Yeah. You're like close to nothing. You were close just to the Chapel so Reservoir. Far away. <laughs> um, nice. How often you out there? Summertime, you get on the paddleboard. There you go. Boat here and there from a neighbor. Best thing, you know. Maybe once a year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, paddleboard every now and then. Uh, friends got a boat. <laughs> friends got a boat. So I'll go on the boat. The, right? The best, the best thing. <laughs> best thing right? is having a friend having yeah. a boat. Right. <laughs> right. The better thing than having a boat, right, is having a friend. Well, the, the, the <laughs> basketball games turned out to be a stinker. It's boring. Um, Bo it's, both it, national champions, like it, like Iowa made it interesting for a minute yesterday. Well, but at least Iowa or had the lead in the beginning. Yeah, of the yeah, game. yeah, yeah. Like close South, time. South Carolina had to fight their way back. Maybe late, it wasn't as interesting, but it was. It was still. I'd make the argument a more compelling, interesting game. Oh, oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. To go from down ten and win by more than ten, that's never happened. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then I. I I look at the game too. I'm gonna to just, just on this game. No, no, no. Forty points in the paint tonight, meaning nobody can shoot. So everything is being contested. Yeah. Listen, this is just my own beast with college basketball compared to the pros. And the pros, they can shoot. And college basketball, they can't. It's pretty simple. <laughs> it's not that that much more complicated. What, what do you want to think? Each team shooting from three. From three, I would say they're both around twenty three percent, something like that, maybe less. Is it like 12? UConn is 27.3 at okay. 6 of 22. Yeah. Each. Purdue is 20%. Yeah. They have made one of five threes that they've taken. <laughs> right. Yeah, they're not Are even out of here. Thanks. Hey, 270, 277. 277. That's great. That's respectable. The last one, it was a calibration issue. I think it was on the sensor. Yeah, he sliced <laughs> it. It didn't even register. It hit the side wall. I love that that was the last thing we did. Here? Hey, hey, come here for a second. Just stay. I played men's league baseball with this guy. Come over here, Bob. Tell these guys what kind of player I was. Describe my, what? You're walking away? Wait, I didn't have any respectful moments? He was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off, Bob. We'll see you. I uh, we'll see you, I played some softball with you. No, let me tell you, let me tell you something. That, guy Bob, pretty fast, that guy, Bob Schmidt, right there. Yeah. He is the best. Men's league player. He, he played um, Division One baseball. Yeah. Lifts weights, and for a guy that beefy, he's yeah. fluid as shit. He is older than me. I think he's about fifty-eight. I guarantee you, still plays in two men's leagues. Um, he would hit a home run every single game we would play, and we played wood bat. So he nice. was hitting three eighty to four hundred foot bombs on a regular basis <laughs> in his thirties. I mean, it was unreal. He was he was the best power hitting. Old guy player I've ever played with in my life. I thought Blake still plays in the men's baseball league. Yeah, he but it's one it. thing to play, and it's another yeah. thing to see a guy who can oh, hit yeah, like yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. bombs that major leaguers would hit. My favorite is so. when major leaguers or pro athletes will come play beer league softball with us. So like guys, Kyle Freeland showed up at Kennedy one time with his high school buddies, hit three triples. You guys remember that show that um, pros versus, pros versus Joe's? Joe's? Yeah. So one thing I wish I would have invented. Like yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. there's a lot of stuff I could have invented. That's one that I feel like conceptually I could have come up with. Bob was so good playing men's league baseball. It really made me question life about how good do you have to be to be a major league yeah. baseball so player? I, I, I grew up playing hockey with a guy. Um, very, very good. He was, he was easily the best of our you know pool. Played for UMass Lowell, Division One school. Very good player. And I think about that all the time. Like, wow, as good as you are, 
it was Division One, and like, like you know, the gap is still so much further. And when when you get around someone that plays at a high level, but to your point, isn't quite there, it's like, what? Yeah. How do you go up yeah. from here? Right. right. And this is part of the problem with me watching college sports. In all honesty, all right. Well, so is because how many of these guys on the court right now, oh, seriously, are going to make an impact in the NBA? Dmac, I get no, into arguments with people the about this. I feel the exact same way. And so, where I was actually going to go with the the um, South Carolina, thirty-eight and zero. That's amazing. I was watching that and I was like, "Whoa, what an un- almost unfathomable feat!" The horn sounds like oh, the tenth time in NCAA history. I was oh. like, "Oh." Never mind. All right, here we go. Here we go. Oh my god! But I was like, I don't know, like that. That it being the tenth time, like made it. It just diminished it for me, and yeah. I was like, and this is what I don't like about college athletics. There's still just such a huge gap between it teams is. at the top. It is, and and, so, and look, look, both both sides for everything that people talk about March Madness, how amazing it is. Yeah. Two one seeds and two one seeds. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying that March Madness is by amazing, the way, but and I don't know anything about college basketball. I picked UConn to win, and I'm gonna probably if I don't win my pool, pool I'll come in like second or third <laughs> yeah. because I just go. Here's what I first of all, I'll do better this year because I just picked Syracuse to win every year. Because <laughs> yeah, when am I ever gonna root against my school right. or think my school is gonna lose? When are you gonna pick against them? Yeah, I'm, the answer is never. So I always pick Syracuse to win, and I all, only enter one pool. Because I think people that do more than one are just garbage. So I just pick one and I'm loyal to my school and I always lose. If Syracuse isn't in, I go chalk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I pick 12s to beat fives in the first round. And then I have 12s losing immediately. And, <laughs> and then I'll just go chalk the rest of the way. I love that. And That's if there's a, a defending strategy. champion and they're also a number one seed, I'll automatically pick them to win the national yeah, championship. Yeah. And and as I'm as I'm doing right now. I, I just see I'm I'm with you on, on college sports. I just don't. I, I really struggled getting into them. The first couple of rounds of this is always really fun and really exciting. But I just still think that, like you said, there's just so many of these guys that won't won't make it to the, the NBA, let alone be impact players. And it comes down to the teams that the schools that pour the most money to their programs every year anyways. The biggest reason this podcast and this live stream, which has been really fun, by the way. So we had Nate Jackson, Dave Brune, and Brandon's been here. We've had Dominic Miller, my real estate agent, yep, um, from that. Ed Prather, be here. Jeff Owen talking about all of our amazing sponsors. And we had Mark. I, you, you weren't here. You weren't. I was waiting for you to get here. And I'm so glad that I wasn't so that Mark could come on. That was fantastic. So Mark, Mark wasn't here, and I, I want to give props to Gorilla. I didn't know how the game was going to go. People are tuned out because people are not paying attention because the game's not very interesting. <laughs> That's the way it goes. Um, but I just thought you were going to be here earlier. I so I fully intended to talk about guerrilla sports, but you just weren't here. So we went with Mark. Oh, it was it, terrific. It, it, he, did, he did great. He and, did great. And he's so interesting. And we can talk about Russia and the culture. Yeah. And there's quite a few um, Russian based athletes on the avalanche yeah. right now. Um, and it is, if you want to know some boutique, unique information about the avalanche, you want to know all the details about the abs, <laughs> know that the one person in the media that can, talks on a regular basis to Val and the other yeah, Russian athletes yeah. is Mark. It's Mark. And I think it's pretty unique. They light up to cool. see him too. Yeah, because like first of all, he's a great guy. Right, he's right. not a dick. <laughs> and, um, and and he's so unpretentious. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, they yeah. can feel that. Well, and, and what you were asking him about, you know, he, he and I talk about that. And he's made mention to me before, and I think he's listening to this right now. So, hi, Mark. Uh, you know, he's, he's – I imagine that it's just nice to have a casual conversation yeah. – with someone in your yeah. your your native language, yes, and so like you know, he said, yeah, most of the time we talk like pretty innocuous stuff, but like yeah. I imagine that's you know one of the better five minute stretches of, of everyone's day, Mark included. Like that's just got to be nice to. It's so funny because he'll always come back over to us when he's done, and we're like, "What they say?" <laughs> and I I think he always lies to us. <laughs> yeah, I think he's actually getting some real information. <laughs> They're saying but some you know, crazy shit. You know, and he's like, just, ah, I'm between the Russians, yeah, just yeah. up yours. <laughs> Um, so oh, but, but, okay, well, hold on real fast. You guys were talking about you were counting the Russians. There's kind of a, a, an unwritten rule in the NHL once you get one, you have to have two. Yeah, well, the abs and, have like five. And once you have two, it's yeah. really easy to get more. Do you remember in the early 2010s, yeah. it started with Varlamov? Then okay. suddenly they had like seven Russians. Is that on the right? Roster. Is that right? It's just, uh, and the so we got right now. Like let's, let's go through it now. You've got. 
and I'll count Georgiev, even though I know he's from Bulgaria. Yeah. But Georgiev, Trenin, Val. Yeah. Who am I forgetting? Kovalenko. Okay, we'll go Kovalenko. Rostov. Rostov. Yeah. Five. And Tatar was from Czech. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah, yeah he yeah. was from smaller, Russia. Smaller country. Um, yeah. Uh, so there you go. The abs, the abs so five are, guys, five Russians really within the organization. Which, if you if you look around the NHL, that's a lot. Yeah. And for Finns, you've got Lekkonen, Rantanen, Annanen. Kibby Ranta. Kibby and, Ranta. And Miko That's Rantanen's right. fucking hilarious with that dude. He, I mean, he like openly campaigns. Yeah, more Finnish players, need more Finns. I mean, I'm sure he's joking sometimes. He tells Joe Sacky all the time, get more Finnish players. They just did a their social media. Maybe not more Finnish players' fathers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> more Finnish players they, uh, leave the dads at home. They were talking about they, – they were – they didn't bring up that, but they mentioned Lekkonen's dad on the broadcast, the ESPN broadcast last night. Oh, coach growing up, hard-nosed guy. Yeah. It's like, oh. Yeah, caused a little problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Caused a little something, something going on. The thing that always fascinates me, because, you know, I, I don't know if you caught it, Jess, when you are coming down, but Mark, who works with you, yeah. is obviously from Russia, and you can detect his accent. A little bit. Like the, like enough that, like, oh, there's something, but you, you wouldn't know necessarily. But of all the people I've ever – covered it certainly in hockey which has most international baseball the idea that gabe landis got grew up oh, in sweden it. oh, it's like oh my shit. gosh it's he's got a crazy. canadian accent you would you would have yeah. no zero idea and well, his wife's it, american like it's even a muted canadian like there's like i heard ray ferraro was on your radio station there with your afternoon show yeah and he grew up in america yeah but sounds more canadian than gabe does <laughs> yeah. Yeah. well then have you ever heard gabe switch it and yeah, yes, 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 it's amazing. You know what? Uh, it, yeah. in, in the in the in the cup run, somebody asked him a, yeah. a question in Swedish. Yeah. yeah. No, I was friends with um Matthew Barnaby of the Sabres back in the yeah, day. Yeah. And he was like a meathead, you know, and like <laughs> the, the, you know, Matt Barnaby, uh, whatever. Fluent French. Really? That, oh yeah. And because that's that's part of Canada he's from. Yeah. yeah. And that was nuts because he didn't have any kind of French accent. And you think of French as kind of a more sort of beautiful language mm -hmm. and the intelligence level at least at the time of Matthew Barnaby <laughs> I, I didn't have a hard high regard for so but it buzz, does blow me away well, you know plenty of dummies that seem to know English. no 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 I, I I get it I I was I covered Václav Varada back in the day from Russia and his he was young and he his English wasn't so great he learned English watching the Jerry Springer show <laughs> and it makes logical right. sense for a second if you think about it because morning skate <laughs> they used to say morning skate big lunch take a dump nap go to games some somewhere in that sort of order but they would have the middle of the day to themselves yeah and so that was it that was what was on in the middle of the day and there you go this game by the way is about to wrap up let me get to a couple things real quick um yukon's going to win they're up 73 to 60. So then you're gonna, uh, the 7 2 cover. guy beats the 7 4 guy, and they're just they're just um dribbling it out. So the game's about to end. I want to thank Gorilla uh, Sport and Gorilla Sports is actually a couple of different things. Yeah. Why don't you explain exactly what the company is? Yeah, so uh, as Mark beautifully explained earlier, Gorilla Capturing is kind of the company that that makes all of this happen. It's kind of the engine that drives all the video work that you guys see uh, our editors and, and uh, videographers and all that stuff gorilla capturing does any and everything for your, you know like like or uh, excuse me, like mark was saying commercials documentaries short films all that kind of stuff what we're doing at gorilla sports is essentially taking uh that unbelievable unbelievable high quality that gorilla capturing has been known for for 15 years uh and we're delivering uh new fresh digital content that you know feels a little bit like what you get on a normal broadcast yep um, and uh, we're, we're with the abs right now, uh, covering them in the NHL, and hopefully, there will be a deep cup run. Uh, but but we're we're growing every day, and, and everyone's working their tails off to, to get into other avenues and other channels. And uh, it's a grind, but it's a ton of fun, you know. It's great, too. And Jesse, and I well, we've been friends for forever, it's ridiculous. Me and Brandon, and Jesse and I have been relatively new friends, but yep. I, I consider really good friends, yeah, yeah, and both of us working. On this, and, and Jesse's been a guest on our radio show a million times, yeah, right. yeah. and we keep going oh, there. Have a new winner, by the and way. we will, and um, and I hope we continue this partnership. Yeah. And listen, we could have done this watch along with me sticking my laptop here, <laughs> having a mic. You can do it, sure. but we wanted this to look good, and the high quality of production is is unreal. 
I mean, it's yeah. unbelievable. Thanks. Yeah. So the Thank work you. we're getting from from you guys has been incredible, and Thank I'm grateful. You, yeah. And let's hope this is the first of many partnerships many that more. we can work together. No, absolutely. And, and and I mean, do we 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 love doing work with you, and and we love. Thank you for letting us be a part of this and come down oh. here and. Uh, I, I give a shout. We're gonna give a shout out to Mark and John uh, oh, who are over there. Incredible, make it, make John. John, happen. we had a problem because I wouldn't do my hangout show four thirty five. I've never had the problem I had today. <laughs> never had it until today, and John figured it out. Yeah, I don't even know how he figured T- it out. Total pro, both of them. I mean, the, I don't even know what he did, but he just fixed it. The meticulous nature of the way that Mark works is borderline unbelievable to yeah. watch, and it's and what, you can see it. Well, you're and, you're and looking look, at it right now. You were watching it, but I glance on my phone. There were a, a, a thousand people, more than 1,100, uh, watching at a given time. So yeah. I think that's certainly a credit to, to you, DMAC, and all of your loyal listeners and fans and viewers. That You had more than 1,000 people watching a long now, a boring game. I know. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, know, it, it was, was better. I believe it was up better. over 1,300 at one point. Yeah, go. and I, I, I want to thank you for paying attention to what we're doing with Killing the Truth. And it's kind of weird to go in somewhere you've never gone before. Like, what is it? Where do we go? What do we do with it? And we're still just, we're scratching the surface. Yeah. I hope. I hope we're just um, scratching the surface. So the game is over, and we'll just kind of wrap things up. You um, stay through one shining moment? We're not going to stay through one shining moment. Uh, well, but speaking of that, so Michael Malone brought this up today, and I forgot to post the video, and I don't know if anyone else did. But I asked, like, hey, are you going to have me watch parties or whatever? I mean, because the NBA takes the night off. They yield to yeah. college basketball. If, if there are any pros. Hot, well, no, no, there's a couple games. A couple games yeah, yeah, but if there are any pros, a lot of times they'll hop on a private jet to go watch their team or their alma mater if it's close. But so he said, look, all of my guys, we go to the same place in Utah. But the whole staff, we go out, break bread, watch the game. He yeah. goes, a lot of the players, they're a close-knit group anyway. They're certainly encouraged, but he expected they would do that. And he said, you know, Ryan Bone also serves as the DJ during practice and said he played two songs today. He played Total Eclipse of the Heart, and then he played One Shining Moment. Funny. And they've got four guys in there, that uh, was Christian Brown and, and Gillespie being two of them, that One Shining Moment means something different to them. Yeah, because you could say Julian Strother is like one of those head-scratching, I can't believe I didn't win yeah, he, a national he listened, championship. He listed two other players, and I was like, wait, those guys have titles too? Well, he he was in a national championship game as a freshman. Maybe but, one of the assistants. But he, he was with Chet Holgram um, yeah. last year. Right. And or two years ago. The fact, right, two years ago. So the fact that they couldn't win is amazing too. Anyways, UConn won. We thank um, Ed Prather for bringing this all to you. EdPrather.com. It's been a blast to be at Avocati. Our partnership, we're getting going. And uh, we'll see where it takes us next. Um, and I do, I got to admit, I do love a watch party. That if you want to watch, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> because here at Avocati, there's a million other things to do. And the drinks and the food. Did you get, you missed, was the lobster truck still here? Uh, they were packing up. I heard that they were unreal. We just came from dinner. My wife's here with me. We just came oh, from dinner. Oh, okay. But, awesome. Yes. But I, so, no, I didn't get one. But local I'm lobster. all good. Yeah. All right. Looked amazing. Uh, I, I and thanks to, thanks to our, our guys at uh, Journey Spice Company, which is amazing. <laughs> Um, and, um, I don't know, man, I'm just so grateful and thankful, uh, but we'll be back at it tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. with about last night. Then, uh, me, Nate and Chad, Chuckle the Pain at 9 a.m. This is my schedule. I know, I know. My schedule's crazy. <laughs> then noon to three with Scott and Tyler. I had to come be a part of some of it. Yep. And then we'll do the hangout live. That'll be back at my house <laughs> unless somebody wants to pay me to show up and then I'll be there. I I'll be double, there at your I house. double check. Michael Porter Jr. did not win a national championship. In his lone season at Missouri, where he played the one game or whatever, a couple practice games. And then um, Christian Brown won at Kansas. We'll be at the Wild. I think that game is a little big. Yeah. I think we got two, like, we got little heat checks here. Like, just a couple years ago, they had a little team meeting yeah. before that um, uh, St. Louis game just to make sure we're okay. Jared yep. brought that up today, though. They, I didn't re- remember this. They oh, lost, I remember it. They lost four or five going into their cup. Yeah, they did. And yeah. they had a team meeting. They got their shit together. They beat Minnesota, and then the last two games, you know, who cares? St. Louis. They beat. They beat St. Louis. They beat, beat St. Louis. Beat St. Louis. So who's, who's in net tomorrow? Who, who's there in the, in, in it, the net? It's got to be Georgiev. I agree. I think it's important to ask Georgiev. Yep. I think Bednar is going to the mat, and I think he's doing the right thing. It's not a time for a kick in the pants. It's time for a hug. Yeah. Okay. And I understand you miss it, but we got a great detail when he has a bad game. He likes watching movies. And, he and watched, last night he watched Fast and Furious. The first one. He, <laughs> oh. he, he was asked which one. The first one, which then as Hell we went yeah. outside to talk to to Jared or wait for Jared for a couple minutes, 
the handful of media that was there, we all started talking about how many of them we had seen yeah. and where we had stopped. I mean, I, I've obviously seen all of them. But. I did ask him, I said, how would you assess your play? And he go, I could play better. And then he stared at me yeah. for like three seconds of See, silence. But I'm like, I've okay. heard he's got a little bit of the, the Nate edge in him. I, well, I him, saw it firsthand. Look, and I don't pretend like I'm there, obviously, anywhere near as, as much as you guys are. And so I'm not there very often if I'm there and I've got something on my mind I want to ask him because Cogliano brought up that it was their effort in detail, lack of detail. You know, Jared talked about it. But Jared was defending Georgiev. Then Duran agreed and basically – Echo that. So then I get there. It's the right thing. But I get there to Georgia. I go, look, everyone's saying that it's what's going on in front of you. So how do you reconcile when you give up seven? He goes, six. And I was like, okay, sorry, <laughs> six. And you know that it's not really your fault. You make some good saves. So how do you? He's like, look, I can still play better. Well, listen, let me yeah. tell you if there was a moment that you should have made a change because the central was still up for grabs, yeah. it was at 5 2 give your team but oh, on, the, on the three power play goals because then you can pass it off as a, i'm trying to jolt the team yes. and not yes throwing but, him under the bus but you didn't and now you can't win the central you can't win the western conference yeah so i don't think there's a reason for Anon to play the rest of the year oh wait do they have a back-to-back -back or uh, not they, they, they do it's winnipeg and vegas they do so and, i would yeah, play i would play eustace against and Vegas. I, I think it's similar. And it's a day game, isn't it? Day game They're after both day game? games. It's, oh, day it's game, like day a game. 1 o'clock yeah, and a, a noon one. or something. But it's weird. They have three days off between but, yeah, tomorrow before night and – Yeah, after. So it's, you do have a back-to-back, -back, but you have three days off be before – So they have they have they play tomorrow, three days off, back-to-back, -back, three days off. Yeah, that Vegas game to me, I don't give a shit. Yeah. What I want them to do, I want them to beat Minnesota, and that game against Winnipeg could matter for, for home, ice. home ice. And then likely – the Vegas and Edmonton game won't even matter. Yeah. So and if you want to play you, but I, I'm with you. You goaltending is like one of the most fragile mental positions in all sports. You, you have to have your full, you got to be fully behind him. He's our guy. We're going with it. Yeah. And if the wheels start coming off, you know, in game three and you got to make a switch, make a switch. But I'm with you. You got to go in with him. But, but you're our guy. But Jared did say we feel good about both of them. And since we've been going through this rotation. Yeah. So he's certainly leaving the door open that. It may not get to get, you know, let's see what game one looks like. Yeah. And if it's not going great, I wouldn't be surprised if in game two, it's like, you know, we J Jared's that's a, intensity is picking up a bit, eh? He's a little just, bit. Uh, uh, yeah. It's, 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 listen, dude, it's, 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 I it's, wish, it's I wish thing. I could take you some Nuggets things because it's so tight right now with the Avs compared to where the Nuggets are. It's, it's night and day. Really? Jared's tight. The locker room's tight. Well, see, but he gets like this. It's usually game one. You show up that morning skate. You remember, and he won't answer anybody's question, yeah, and he's got that right. little smirk. Th yeah. This is a little different, yeah. but it feels like he's. Yeah. But 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 then again, then again, that's the nature of hockey in the NHL. Period. Yeah. So it's nothing unusual, and I wouldn't say it's anything bad. That is the culture and the intensity of the sport. That's how it is played, and you either thrive or you don't no, in yeah, that I, environment. The I end. think I think Malone would be his personality would fit in just fine coaching in the NHL. No, it wouldn't. It's Dude. way too open, way too loose, way too. The fact iffy. that he's still putting Joker in. He'd be like, he'd be Cleveland. like a John Tortorella who, yeah, who yeah. does okay, but but those emotional coaches to me. Oh, I don't. Too emo okay. Wow, like, the, I, mean, I think Torts is the man. Two Sunday, I love it. What's two? he won? Stanley Cup. All right, okay. only one of one of those. His name is but still, no. But <laughs> he does have one of those. A couple two Sundays ago, and they're blowing the the Cavs up by twenty one, and you know I wasn't at the game, but I'm watching it and. More than, you know, in that situation, more times than not, I've asked, or more than once, I've certainly asked, did you think about sitting? Your, like, Joker, it was my fantasy championship. Joker came back in the game, which helped me. I'm like, what? they're up 21. He comes back in at the six-minute mark, and Malone's always like, well, I've seen too much happen in this I league. And he's it's a like, paranoid guy. <laughs> I guess that would fit right in. That's what would fit in. That's All right, that so trait. tomorrow night we will be at the uh, Avs Wild Game, but keeping tabs of the Nuggets and Jazz. That that's happened at the same time. Did you, did you go over those records, by the way, in Utah? Because Malone did it for us. It's ridiculous. I didn't realize that they were 0-6, and, and he's only won there once. Dude, it's like it's illegal to win in Utah. Yeah, so Joker. I'm not <laughs> he, said he, asked, he, said he, asked, he said he asked Nicola. No, it's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. But he said right. he asked Nicola, hey, how many games do you think we've won in Utah since we've been here? He goes, I don't know, three. He goes, I wish it was three. Well, I got a one. one little factoid. Right. How many times at Ball Arena do the Avs and Nuggets play on back-to-back -back nights against teams from the same state? Oh, how about that one? Because it's Minnesota and Minnesota. 
And back-to-back -back nights. And that happened – they were in Minnesota back-to-back. How about to, that one? I feel like they were in Minnesota back-to-back -back either last year or the year before. And they were in I, Boston. The, yeah. They were in Boston. Right but it wasn't – it was year. close, but it wasn't back-to-back. -back. No, it was like – It was close, Consecutive though. games. It, there it was. was yeah. There was – I was, think right. it was last season or the season before. Or maybe that's what you're talking about. Yeah. But they were they were there at this – like they, they, they overlapped went to dinner for a day. Yeah, they, like there was yeah. a video of yeah. them like – both PR staffs and, and but it is yeah, it is yeah. pretty funny. But neither of them were playing. They were that right, right. right. If you're a wild Timberwolves fan, welcome to Denver. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And with that, we'll say, well, we're here in Denver all the time, and we appreciate you watching. UConn. And thanks to everybody. I don't First care. Since 06, 07 to go back to back. Yeah, who gives a shit? All right, and on that note, we thank you for watching, and we kill you with truth.